Apex Online Racing is sponsored by Elgato, who created this lovely stream deck. For more information about the stream deck, the link is in the description below. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Evil Dragon XXL, and welcome to another round of the GT3 AOR season. Joining me once again is the ever so reliable and beautiful Jess. Say hello, Jess, to the stream. Hello, Evil. Good evening, everybody. And we, tonight, we are going to Kota at the Circuit of the Americas, where it's going to be hosting its first double header of the season. The first two races were the normal. Uh, 15 minute or so qualifying and then followed by the an hour race this time we've got qualifying as per usual and then we got a 20 minute sprint race and then a feature race which is about 40 minutes which i believe is a reverse grid as well of certain drivers as well but i like uh kota for some weird reason it's one of my favorite tracks on this calendar due to the the, the twisty nature of it and so many battles happen around here too i'm excited Indeed, a circuit that often provides great entertaining racing, especially if you're going off the circuit the last two corners, like a certain Indy car. If I see anyone, there'll be a lot of references to that later on. But of course, Jess, we've got a nice hot lap to go through in just a few moments' time as well. Yes, we do. And uh, without further ado, Evil, we may as well do it right now, as uh, it's not Ethan this week doing the hot lap. We've got someone different. And it is our championship leader, Mr. Jazzman, is going to take you on board on a hot lap around the circuit of the Americas in Austin, Texas. Hey, everybody. This is Jazzman here. I'll be doing the lap for this week around Cota in the Lamborghini uh, GT3 car. Now we're getting on to the start of the lap. There we go. It's very important now to uh, obviously get a good exit from that corner to maximize your speed on the straight. Getting into the first braking zone, you want to uh, spot your braking point at this, at this white bollard over there that you brake. Getting down into first gear, keep the rear stable, get a nice apex and obviously get a good exit. I go up into fourth gear a bit early just to help get the nose into the corner. Um, seems to be better on traction. Now heading into this corner here, I like to get down into third, keep the revs high, um, seems to help over the curbs. And you really just want to take a real flow in line there. You don't want to try push it too much this corner again it's all about just getting your line perfect heading into this corner it's second gear corner you want to again focus on exit because it could be a lot of time to gain um, very very fast section to talk through and I'm sorry but I didn't do a great job there anyways heading into this very crucial breaking point you want to try really really focus on your exit chats it's, it's it's pretty much all that matters for that corner in my opinion as you can gain a lot of time out of exit, talking two to three tenths if you do it properly. Um, now over here you just want to keep it as straight as possible, minimize the steering um, to not scrub off any speed. I keep it in fifth gear on the revs because uh, it just makes the car, it just feels more stable for the car to get down from fifth to first rather than sixth. Um, it's just a personal preference. Uh, heading to this corner here, I keep it in second gear to minimize wheel spin. And yep, just try to focus, keep the line pretty tight for me. And then we head into this left hander, one gear. I like to keep it sort of in the middle of the track and hit the power, get an early apex. Uh, but there are three different lines through that corner. And into this corner here, yeah, it's a third gear corner, just lifting, 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 lifting until the car nose points in and then full throttle. Over here is a third gear corner, left quite fast, just really got to keep it inside the track because the track limits there are pretty steep. Coming to the last corner here, this is either, either a second or first gear corner. I prefer first gear as it just gets the nose in and the traction seems to be better. Thank you everybody, this has been Jazzman and I'll see you guys on the track. 
Right then, so thank you, Jazzman, for the hot lap down. Before we go to qualifying as people are on their out lap at the moment, but we are going to go and talk about the championship standings. Now, last week, we saw Tinnis, who took the race victory ahead of Jazzman in P2. And that means that both Jazzman and Tinnis both have one race win each and one second place each as well. And the gap is one point due to Jazzman's fastest lap. Um, last week so that, that's why he's one point clear of Tinnis in second place we got uh, um, SM Rotary in a P3 after some consistent results uh, with a strong podium finish in last week's race in Barfest and then we got Big Kid Daddy Mr. Consistent in fourth place getting a third in the first race and a fourth in the second one last week Vetro in fifth place or in with 40 points we got Esther Racing in sixth with 38 points, he'll be pretty happy with that. And we got Chicano in seventh with 38 points also. Darren Sinclair, what a great battle we had with him last week. It was great to see. Is he going to keep up that performance this week? We'll find out. Davies out in ninth place with 32 points. And then joint 10th, we've got Londoff and Seca with 28 points. Um, 11th, we've got... Uh, no, 12th, we've got Prem with 24 points. Every person was in 13th with 18 points. He wasn't here last week. Overtaker in 14th with 12 points and Zout yet to score, unfortunately, with nil point. And Archil, he's at the bottom of the pile and he's still yet to race yet, but um, he is busy with other things. I'm looking forward to seeing him back in racing pretty, pretty soon. And uh, let's go straight to qualifying, Evo, as people are now, uh, people are now on the track. Indeed, people live on the circuit right now down at the beautiful sunny circuit of the Americas, might we say. Uh, Beaming down, it's around about, I think, about 30 to 40 degrees in these track temperatures. That was when I was practicing, I think, earlier on. I can't remember. It's gone over the top of my head. I've been doing a little other things and driving other cars, like an LP1 car around here, which is a lot better than driving a GT3 car. I'll let you know that, because I don't like cars of downforce. And talking of downforce, well, we've got Rotary right now in a car. That, of course, is a Porsche. But the Rotary, that Porsche was not, because, of course, his favorite car is a 787B, and that car had lots of downforce. And won them on in 1991. A car which some might say is very controversial. I love it as a sound of a car, but I don't like it as a racing car. But let's not get down to that because some people might murder me, including Mr. Rotary. <laughs> Moving onwards, we got Vetro so far. He's in the other Porsche. Now, I spoke to him earlier on. He said he is just hoping this race goes up. Of course, even he has a broken mic, so I don't know if he'll be able to do interviews. I think it works on his PC, but his PS4 mic does not work, so Vetro and Ethan cannot communicate, so that means Vetro's had to make his own setup, so let's see what he can do this afternoon for his qualification. Uh, he said aiming for at least around about the top 10 this afternoon, that'll be my goal. Maybe try and pull on pole for the reverse race, I believe it's the top 9 in reverse. Still that consistent uh, rule that AOR runs, so we'll be seeing that in effect later on. Darren Sinclair, meanwhile, in the Audi, the car that drove so well, so far, like you said, just doing an okay job in the championship as well. In the Audi, of course, the one of the only Audis we've seen for quite a few race races, actually. Last year, well, last season, where we said we had quite a bundle of them. This season, only but one Audi in this very diverse field. Zalt 101, he's back again after uh, last week driving the uh, AMG Mercedes, the car that won the championship last year. Not that livery, of course. It was the black uh, livery driven by, of course, our good old friends at the old guys of Gaza and all those lots. Unfortunately, those no longer here right now either. Chicano, he's currently on provisional pole, but yet to lap time. So we're just waiting for the first couple of drivers to set a lap. Now, interesting stat about this circuit. First opened in 2012, first drive to drive around this circuit was Mario Andretti. But if you do know your uh, stats and history, and remember watching the old BBC F1 back in the day, you'll know David Coulthard drove here back in 2011 in a Red Bull F1 car in the dirt. So David Coulthard has the record of being the first driver to drive around this circuit, though technically Mario Andretti was in the 1979 Lotus. If I'm not too mistaken there either. The car, of course, which I believe he went on to win the championship in. Yeah, I, I, I think he did. And that was a good achievement as well. And there's been other tracks where it, America's has hosted 
Um, the Formula One Grand Prix, obviously Indianapolis. We don't want to talk about what happened um, earlier on in the noughties, of course. Only six drivers finished that race. And um, when is this not the only America's track that we're going to on the calendar? We, of course, got Long Beach where we're going to next week. Well, it'll be a normal one-hour race, and that's going to be very, very exciting. A typical street circuit in the Americas. We used to be hosting uh, Indy cars as well, but it will play host to GT3 cars next week but more about that um later on of course with nine minutes left to go but prem he's got a lot of work to do after last time about he um got p10 and p12 um in his first two races of the season he's looking to score higher is his first return back into tier one so i wonder how he's gonna do fair there as well tina's meanwhile is getting a good toe from the lamborghini in front heading towards uh, turn 11 and 12 the long back straight watch out for a lot of overtakes here as well just like we've seen in other racing series as well motor gp also hosts the series here as well as formula one and obviously the gt3s here today of course but tennis will be happy to carry this momentum onto this week he's got a race win under his belt from last week he should be feeling really happy of himself right now evil Indeed, very much will be, of course. Other racers do, uh, racer, of course. Uh, WC come here quite often, they are famous. Race makes uh, six hours of total, if not too mistaken, six or 12, if I uh, remember my statistics correctly. That record around here, by the way, um, from what I was doing, because I was driving the 2016 LMP1 cars, was a one minute 45, which is very much beatable in uh, an LMP1 car on this game, because it's very much quicker than in real life. However, I'm going to go far, got the GT3 cars, of course. When we talk about GT3, you can't talk about, you know, some of the other beautiful circuits that GT cars have raced, of course, in America. Of course, we all remember our Sebring, the, but the definition of the Americas, as it rather invalidates all these times in the bottom right of my screen there. So he's uh, been a bit naughty, naughty and gone and done some indie car off the circuit somewhere. Of course, Sebring, definitely the most famous of the American GT circuits. Of course, we've got Daytona. Uh, for the 24 hours of Daytona, of course, that often runs right at the beginning of the year, up January, February time as well. Of course, you go to Indianapolis, that, of course, uh, occasionally does run GT racing. It hasn't, I do not remember, it hasn't run it for a couple of years now. Uh, I think it does run it in the IMSA series. You've got Road America, Road Atlanta, all these historical motor racing circuits. And Kota Ray, the newcomer to this, I think it's the most recent full-on American circuit in... Uh, purpose-built American circuit, might we say, as well. Built by the famed Herman Tilke. One of only few circuits that are very, very much a lot of elevation shapes. Most of his circuits very flat. Jazzman gets a bit of a twitch on through the S-bends there. Of course, mimicking, as I get the words mixed up, mimicking Maggots, Beckett's and Chapel, of course, and a little bit of the S section of Suzuka as well. This circuit known for its mimics around this circuit and we'll have a little look later on if we can find some beginning lap time or that go on board with them someone's gone off the road meanwhile i'm just saying that big kid daddy you can see on the right that's going ah. wide on the grass going out the way we'll just take you through if we can find someone just coming through the final corners let's go on board with every person he's back from last week now the first corner here very familiar if you drove in austria of course it's turn three technically now at austria the of course, it turns right, this turns left, it's kind of the reverse row. Down into what is Magnus Beck is a jack, pretty much here. These fast flowing, which turn, well, pretty much turn three, four, five, and six, really. Left, right, left, right again. Magnus Beck is a jack, already is almost in reverse as well. It wants to be almost in that reverse. Then you've got this long right hander into this tricky kind of almost little cressy section here. Then up to almost blind right hand when you come up at the top here this corner very easy to get on the curb and spin around as every person does that it's actually on cue go spinning around front top of the hill we'll carry on with him nonetheless we've got five minutes to go in qualifying not a lot of action going on everywhere else over the top of the hill we've seen some very um interesting moments here if you go wide head spent it easy to uh buckle we've seen it in lmp1 we've seen it in gts you've seen it in formula one as well down into the hairpin this could be a favorite move if you line it up down here that's turn number 11 and then down the wall, it's almost a kilometre long straight. It's almost, pretty much got a kink in the middle of it here. You're, sort of, you're almost turning as the straight goes on. It's all not really a straight line. You can see here, slightly bending to the right, of course. That's due to the elevation changes here. 
but then you break down into this downhill braking zone. Longer distancing, of course, as you're breaking downhill. Duck it into turn 12. Then it's right up to turn 13. Almost into what really is one of the most difficult corners on this circuit. Turn 13 and 14. Easy to lose the rear, as every person does that again. Proving exactly why this circuit's very different, uh, difficult. Into turn 15. Left hander. Easy just to run wide. Easy to get up the inside as well. And then into what really is the turn eight of Turkey, just in reverse. And it's only a four apex instead of an eight apex corner almost. Just keep turning, turning, turning. Of course, the drivers, easy to lose in these GE cars. You're not really going to be taking the full throttle into the final couple of corners. It's turn 19. Careful not to run too right here, of course. IndyCar does run right here. And of course, we'll see some drivers later on potentially going wide into the last corner, turn 20. To get the rear end stepping up potentially. It's get a nice run here. And then they're all set for turn number one. But... Every person, Jess, proving exactly when I say those corners are difficult, exactly on point. Yeah, very, very slippy conditions, as has a lot of drivers actually spoken to us about it, that it's quite tricky, of course, but that's what we expect, especially around the S section around America as well. And a lot of people may take the Indy line if they're not careful. Expect a few penalties from a majority of these drivers here today. Last week, we hardly saw any penalties. I think mean, only a few drivers got penalties in the, the land down under but I think we're going to expect a lot more as, as we go on in the session but since there's two races two chances for people to do well because if they don't do as well in the first race we can expect to see them potentially do well in, in the second race as well we've seen quite a few instances in GT3 last season where I think there was one instance where someone put the car on pole and then he took the win as well. So it, it is, you, you've got to play tactically here on what you want to do. But ideally, you want to be consistent in both races in order to have, have a chance of winning the championship as Jazzman goes into the pits. Big Kid, we're riding on board with Big Kid Daddy, Mr. Consistent Driver here as he goes towards the final few corners. 20 corners around this circuit. So a lot for these drivers to manage. But all of them seem to be coping very well. Everyone is smashing what our expectations of pole time already. So uh, it may be due to the track temperatures. As Big Kid Daddy comes across the line now. Is he going to improve his third at the moment? And he stays third. So he doesn't improve his five tenths down in his previous first. A second behind Tinnis who is in P1. Overtaker. He's in fifth place. Just 1.5 seconds behind the leader. But only about a tenth behind Pren as well. Overtaker is having a strong debut until he's fun a couple of times. So let's hope he can score better this season as we've got a lot of fans of Overtaker in the chat. Nice to see a lot of you supporting your uh, friends in the chat. Let us know who you think is going to do well in this qualifying session. Who do you think is going to get Powers Prenner's gone off? I think he's just let some people through. I think that was Vetra or Ethan that just gone past that. Darren Sinclair, I think, going past. That was Vetra, if I'm not too mistaken there. But, um... Looking at your order, by the way, so far, it's a uh, good old Tinnis up front. He's leading this qualification by three tenths a second from Jazzman. The third Lamborghini, by the way, is that is the third car. Uh, so Lamborghini, one, two, three. Top two separate by three tenths a second back to third position. Um, that really shows the level of commitment and just prow prowess these top two drivers have got there. Really, almost a class of their own. No, no, uh, no offense to Biki Danny right now. He's a brilliant driver, but he's really drop back from these top two and it just really shows uh for whatever reason jasmine and tennis i know their teammates they've got whatever they've got in that car is working friend in the ferrari and fourth good showing from that ferrari team so far today fifth for overtaker as well in the other ferrari then we've got ethan in uh sixth position he's driving the first of the three porsches darren sinclair splitting in seventh position he's ahead of every person in the mclaren in eighth position chicano in ninth, he's the next Ferrari, the third of three Ferraris in this field. Then we've come the second and third of the two uh, Porsche drivers. That's Vetro and I think that might be Chicano. That's Fred actually just getting in the way. So Vetro around the outside there. He's currently in 10th. Essa just behind him in 11th. A couple of attempts down. Let's see if Vetro crosses the line. He'll have one more lap to go. If he can get himself up into that top nine potential. Let's see crosses the line. Where does he go? So far, so far, P10, he will stay in P10. It was 10 seconds down on that lap time. Behind him, uh, we've got S up in the second, well, the third poster on this field. We have the other Ferrari, the fourth Ferrari, my apologies, 
in the pit lane. That is all slick up. Davey Zout also in the pit lane in his Bentley. And also Zout 101 also in the pit lane in the Mercedes Benz. So Mercedes down the back, not having a great qualifying. The worst start of a season for a Mercedes driver um, ever. Unfortunately, might be safe, at least since our records begun, since I started commentating, we've not ever seen a Mercedes have a season where they've not at least finished fourth or higher. So, uh, Zout has got a lot of work to do, of course. He is a new driver as well, so no credit uh, credit where credit's due as well. So far, though, it is Tinnis and Jasmine. They are looking like the formidable force this season. Looks like they've got one, two, unless anyone else can beat them. We've got Friend in the Ferrari. He's 1.6 seconds back down the road. Ethan crossed the line where he's going to go. He goes up to P4 so far then. Puts himself on that second row of the go. That's where he wants to qualify. He said, as long as I can be near the front, that's good. Well, so far fourth, but one point, one, one and a half seconds off pole. That's going to be disappointing. We're looking to see who the next car across the line. That'll be Darren Sinclair then in the Audi. The number one Audi car, of course through the long sweeping triple well quadruple right hand kink then one two three four you blink and you miss it of course if you go wide you go spinning off into the wall through turn 19 easy to run wide and invalidate your lap time keeps it just within the track limits down into turn 20 a little bit overhill braking a little bit easier take the inside line and let the car run wide but not too wide rear end wants to step out indeed he does let's see darren sinclair can he get himself up a runabout overtaker and uh, everyone else, let's see, stays in seventh position. Behind him, we've got Vetra crossing line. He's getting a tow. He's getting towed by one of the other Ferraris. I think that might be Fren. Vetra goes up to eighth. Fren goes up to fourth in the Ferrari. Then incredible qualifying for him. What about Chicana? He crosses the line in the secondary Ferrari. He stays tenth. Looks like the Lamborghinis, Evil, are the ones that are shining around here. We've got Tinnis, Jazzman and Big Kid Daddy occupying the top three. And then the, the best of the rest, as it seems, out without those Lamborghinis there, is a Ferrari. And then we got the Porsche as well as well. And then we got the fitting overtakers in the Audi, I believe, as well, along with Darren Sinclair. And then we got another Porsche. we got a McLaren, another Ferrari, another Porsche. So it is a mixture of cars um, occupying those things, but it's a shame to see Mercedes not doing too well. So we've got Tinnis from Jazzman, Big Kid Daddy, Pren, uh, Rotary, Overtaker, Darren Sinclair, Vetro, Every Person and Chicano. And then outside your top 10, we've got Essa, Slicker, and I think it was Dave, uh, Davey Zout, and then we got the other Zout, 101. So, yes. So, it's only 10 laps in the circuit. Obviously, it's 20 minutes. And it's not going to be a rolling start like we've seen in the first two weeks. It's just going to be a standing start like we've seen in normal uh, races in real life. So as soon as the five lights go out, the racing will get underway. Indeed, not often that I get to go a normal start in uh, these types of racing. That's going to be fun to do it every now and then. But again, tennis and Jazzman pole position, one, two. Locking out the front row by a comfortable margin from Vicky Daddy. Lamborghini's taking the top three. Like I said, though, just not you mentioned... Worst start for Mercedes around this circuit for a long time as well. Ferrari's in the mix as well. Ethan there in fifth. Could be an interesting race down towards turn number one. Ethan said he's going to try and send it. So we'll see what happens. Yeah, I I I'm excited as well. We've got two drivers that are missing today. I believe that's Londoff and Archill. Yeah. So uh, shame that Londoff can't make it today. I think... I think there's something wrong with Londoff. That's probably why he couldn't make it today, but not sure where Archer is. So hopefully yeah. these two will go back racing uh, pretty soon. As we like to have a full grid, we haven't had a full grid at all this season, but at least we still got around about 13, 14 drivers every race. So that is good for the PS4 guys on the last season of GT3 for a while. And uh, are we getting... St I think they're just setting up their setups at the moment. They yeah. don't have to worry about fuel too much because the fuel can make it to the end of the race. With only 10 laps and no pit stops. So if they get damaged, that's going to cost them. So they've got to be very wary on the track and avoid contact with other cars. If they keep it clean, they should be fine and get some good points. Indeed. Apparently on my screen, David Zout's making a pit stop. But nonetheless, though, we're getting ready to go in just a few moments' time. 14 of the 16 drivers start yet again. And here comes the five red lights. There's the third, the fourth. And then they're off. They're underway. And they are off. Good start then from Rotary down in the back there. He jumps up already up towards third position. But Tinnis and Jazzman 
dig themselves down towards turn number one. It looks like to me that uh, Tinnis needs some jazz, man. Ethan having a look up the inside there with uh, I think Vicky Daddy looking for the inside as well. Free of breast contact on them. The Audi's there. Contact with that must have been overtaken there around the outside. Free of breast there is venturing almost off the circuit. Banging wheels. There's going to be big contact there. Is this tricky little section here? Vector on the inside. One car around. That's a Ferrari going around. We fear this could happen. That Pren going off the road. Darren Sinclair also involved. Right down the back. We've got another car off as well. I think that's Slicker. Yes, Slicker involved as well. So Melee at the start of this race. Another car going well. That's the other Ferrari of Overtaker. So the Ferrari's having a shocking start in this race. So far though, Vector is stonking start from the Dutch. But already up to fifth position from ninth. He's already heard every person overtaker. Esther is on a good stop, but also Carnage down the back loop. Fred in damage with uh, Slicker. Darren Sinclair damage on the front end. That looked like to be almost a concertina effect. We saw Vetro free abreast with someone earlier on. And they've all seemed to have come together. Vetro's got away Scott Freeler, and he's already near his teammate. So, good start for him, but it's Tinnis leading from Jasmine. Then comes Ethan. Good start for him here ahead of... Big Kid Daddy. Vetro following suit. We've got uh, Overtaker on the inside of every person then. The uh, camera not really working with us right now, but uh, hopefully it'll come back in just a few seconds time. There we go then. So every person in to six. This an Overtaker try on the outside then. If try go around the outside. Just better do it there because every person a little bit caught on the inside. What's out for Essa on the inside as well? He's never so lucky. Every person a little bit wide there. We know the McLaren seems a little bit edgy on this circuit, Jess. So everyone though, in the top, at least top 10, got a very reasonable clean start apart from Darren Sinclair, Slicker and Friend down the back. Well, the conditions are a lot different compared to qualifying. It's a lot sunnier here as well. So that's maybe why some of these drivers are impressing and some of these drivers have fallen down the order. But Tinnis is leading away already from his teammate, 1.4 seconds right now. So we've got two Lambos. And then we got a Porsche, then a Lambo, then a Porsche. The Porsche seem to climb up the order. And Big Kid Daddy's going to try and go for a lunge on Ethan, then going into the S section pretty soon. But he has to stay behind for him for good measure, of course. The S section really tricky to get a move here, right on the back of him. And Big Kid Daddy trying to remain consistent and try and gain another position this time from Ethan. Make up for lost time. Oh, got a car off, Jess. Sorry to interrupt you. Car off. That is in the SX, and that is the Ferrari of Overtaker. They're going Ooh. wide, so uh, he's dropped. That's turn four, and he's uh, rather making a new line there. Where is he? Uh, he should be around the circuit. There he is. There. Look like the Indy line be... there, Evil. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's doing the Indy car line. Where is he going? That is that is not where you want to be going, my friend. That's going to get the cars more dirty. He'll be overtaken here by the Mercedes of... Uh, that's out. He's made a good start so far from the back of the Garou, though, but... Uh, Oh, what is he doing? Oh, they on the brakes there. They're even more there on the brakes. That was the Bentley almost running into the rear of him there. I thought he was making a lunge on exit there. But uh, alas, he managed just about to get the car stopped there before a major shunt. But that Mercedes, let's see. Uh, Mercedes versus Ferrari down the straight. That should be an interesting momentum there to see if he can get through. They just ventures up the road. Uh, in the background, that is um, Takano, I thought, for a second. Having a look up the inside of... The others out, so Davies out, Zout, and everyone's together. There's out, there's out colleagues are together. Meanwhile, Slicker on uh, one of the cars, Darren Sinclair, there down the back as well with friends. So these three drivers all still stuck together like a magnet, and they, it's like they'll be staying together for the time being. As on the inside, there goes Slicker on his fellow comrade Fred and gets that job done. A okay, back to on board. We go with these three cars. So far, though, overtaken, looking more like he wants to try and get ahead. He looks like he's a bit more pace, though. Made a mistake. Dropping down a few positions. Venture in fifth, still doing an okay job. He's just holding on to this gaggle of cars. But you can see, though, uh, Jess, this two, three, uh, this gaggle dropping back. Overtaken, looking up the inside. Not going to do it there. Meanwhile, he's big kid daddy close enough for a lunge down towards turn number one. No, he's not. Ethan's wise off. It still covers off either way. Let's go back down to this battle line. Is anyone going to try and make a lunge down towards turn one? We know it's possible. However, you do that and you end up going into another car. That's your entirely your own fault. Now, we know last uh, that from the first races, and meanwhile, talking about dives, that slicker diving down the inside wow. of Darren Sinclair. Londok was disqualified from the first race, by the way, for track limit penalties reviewed by the steward. So he uh, got a DSQ. Uh, from the first race, unfortunately for him. Uh, apparently he is uh, considering getting a job potentially. That is what I've heard. So uh, hope uh, 
that everything goes well for him as well. So, meanwhile, first, second, third, fourth, all separated by six seconds, Jess. Then almost six seconds down, that is the next kind of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven cars. That That is crazy. It's great to see that we're seeing this battle, but they um, are going to rely on the Slipstream here as well. When all the cars are relying on Slipstream, it uh, could make things very interesting, except if you're the car right at the front of this train trying to defend. Just remember the Trilly train as well in F1. This is kind of like what it is um, for the likes of Vetro that's leading this train. Um, he's going to be a bit worried that, that he's going to try and defend off this lot as well. But uh, I'm sure he could live up to the pressures. Oh, someone has just made a mistake there. Right. Unfortunately, the cameras didn't like us for the time being. The camera's playing havoc on us today. And uh, uh, we could do, probably do a better job than the cameras. But there we go. Pren is... Uh, at least he's still going though, even with this damage. And uh, I think it's just minor anyway. So, and it's only 20 minutes. If it was longer than that, then if I was him, I would probably go into the pit as well. But but it's nice to see him still in 13th place. Every person though is up to sixth place. He's doing quite well too. Yes, quite a few, SO2 trying to uh, defend off the Porsche. More lost the rear end. No, not, not, not the Porsche, the Mercedes. The Mercedes. Lost the rear end out of turn 19 there. Almost did a. Almost what kind of like Danny Kavir did in 2015 in the Red Bull, of course. Not many car, not many times I see a car going off the road. Of course, you saw an Indy car uh, a year ago. But that was more because everyone's going wide and they ended up colliding. With, like very silly mistakes there. You can see S losing the rear end again. That's the inside, and that is a rather easy move potentially there from the Mercedes. It should just be able to grunt itself around the outside here and get up the inside. Now this is the corner. You don't want to be going side by side too easily because there's going to be contact. Not careful. They just about managed to get out of the way that time around the Mercedes. Just sitting back right now, not having the best race. And has he gone off the road? He has gone off the road. No, never mind then. Not having the best race. He's going from bad to worse right now for the Mercedes. So, saying that, he did come from last up to uh, right about ninth. Now he's dropped himself down to 11th. So, struggling ever so much. Meanwhile, to this battle between Binky, Danny and Ethan. Gap so far. Starting to open up about four, five tenths a second. Further back, by the way. Every person, Vectro and Overtaker. Those three, four drivers still all together. There's... See Porsche, McLaren, McLaren, almost said Mercedes, McLaren. Not that you see a McLaren down a straight. And then we've got the Ferrari, which looks like it's got a bit of a toe right now on the pair of them. Let's see, is Overtaker going down the inside? Is every person going to cover it off? No, he's not. Now, Vector won't be careful here because that Ferrari's going to die. And is he going to make the corner? Well, we won't know until we see the camera rejoin. He does make the corner, but it has to slot back in behind Vector. Vector's still lying ahead of him there. So. Looking like he's just trying to get every position he can there, Overtaker. He's on the lunge, he's on the move, and he's always spinning himself into the corner. For good measure, rear end rotating round. He seems to be doing that ever so slightly more recently. So, to me, looks like that Ferrari not as hooked up on the setup in the dirty air. You can see through this long turn 17, 18 section coming into 19. Really struggling on the rear end. Every person as well, looking everywhere as well. He just stuck up behind that Mercedes, uh, the Ferrari and then stuck up behind the Porsche so far as well. Oh! As you can see, contact there. That was Vector getting himself out of position there. The Constantino effect, of course, happening. Damage on every person. That will uh, potentially damage the radiator, but I doubt so. Zap, meanwhile, got himself a time penalty. That's for track limits to the last corner, I imagine. For good cause there. It gives you no uh, regret. It gives you no chance. If you go wide, that straight penalty. Yeah, and we've seen that in real life F1, of course. A few people have had their times invalidated in WEC as well. We've seen we've seen that a few times. So we're following those rules, and you can't get away with that in Project Cars too. If 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 you go on that red line, then a penalty will be awarded here. And we can see that Overtaker has had a bit of a spin. Up. It's got a spinella in to the S's and. Which way is he going right now? Is it? Well, he's trying to he's trying, trying to get into the circuit by the looks of it, which he does. He's down to 11th now, but no penalty awarded there. He's going to try and get past. I believe that's Pren. Pren. Again. Yeah, so that's Pren. He's going to get back past. Can't do it. That's so Overtaker uh, rather spinning around in this race. He's got no confidence. It looks like well, actually, ever in the car. Of course, track conditions are not perfect. Slick is going to go send one down the inside. He's not too careful. Uh, he won't get a good exit there, however. I think he'll get a bad exit. No, let's see. He's actually got a head, I think, ever so slightly of the other Ferrari then. So those two side by side down the straight. 
And you can see Overtaker just seems to have a bit more straight line speed than his uh, uh, fellow Ferrari. He's getting a slipstream, of course, off the car ahead. Then see, though, down the inside. Slicker, read the wily old coyote. He should just be out of sliver on down the inside. Won't be careful, let me colliding as they just about avoid each other for the time being. Now Overtaker has the inside line. Just, just be able to slip run down the inside. However, Slicker's not only one of the more experienced drivers, he's definitely one of the more uh, uh, out there drivers. He wants to get a pass. He will get past. But right then, Overtaker just about holding that position off so far. Meanwhile, Bicky Daddy on the inside of Ethan. That is for third and fourth position. And finally, Bicky Daddy's managed to get the inside. So he's got to run through turn 19. Now Ethan's going to try one. Down towards turn one. He'll have to dummy him to the inside. Almost squeezes him into the wall. Down the inside comes Rotary there. Can he get the car stopped? Just about forced Ooh. him off. Bang. They almost touch. They do touch that. Bicky Daddy forced wide. Ethan's going to let him back through Sportsman. Sit between the pair of them then. So contact down the straight nearly then. Bicky Daddy almost putting him in the wall there. And Ethan will not be impressed with that one. But now has to sit behind him then the fellow drivers and now he's got back ahead of him as Big Daddy goes off the road. So Big Daddy then goes straight off the road then so they switch, switch, switch and switch again then as Rotary and Big Daddy battle for third and fourth position, the final podium spot. Meanwhile, I just noticed it by the way, Jazzman's dropped very far back from Tina so he's made a mistake as well. He was about three, four tenths behind so he's gone off as well. Lamborghini struggling it looks like in these conditions Meanwhile, back to uh, the midfield we go. And uh, Davey's out battling with every person. Yeah, it's nice to see. Of course, Davey's out going higher up the field than we usually expect as well. He did really well hanging about with Darren Sinclair last week. He got P6 and it was a nice battle to watch, I've got to say. So fair play to him. And again, he's battling over the likes of every person and out as well. So uh, he, he's expecting to climb up the order based on his performance from last week. But as long as he could stay in the top 10, he should be absolutely fine. He's aiming to not be last place. But at the moment, my friend, Davey, you are going to be absolutely fine if you try and keep those people behind you as uh, the Mercs still not doing too well compared to the Bentley. I like the Bentley on this game and especially around Kota. The Bentley is just like the dark horse. It's surprising us in every way possible. It's still able to battle with some great cars on this circuit. It's just nice to have a variety around here. Yeah, of course, because remember last couple of seasons, we just had about two free drive uh, cars, not drivers, we could certainly get just two free drivers in the field, but uh, two free cars in the field, might we say, battling around. That was the Lamborghini, most likely the Mercedes, the Audi, and occasionally the Porsche. Well, we've got the Porsche, you've got the Mercedes, you got the Audi, but of course the Mercedes, absolutely no in this field, it's down there in 10th position, uh, having a rather comparatively to uh, the previous season Mercedes have run, a poor season, now we should be getting past the Bentley. Now, Bentley versus Mercedes, these two cars are the quickest in a straight line in the field, but uh, it's out, he's out, and looks like Zout 101 has got the uh, 101 move on his fellow Zout comrade, and he gets through then up the inside, and let's see, is the Bentley going to try send him around the outside, overtake it in the pit, they, for Dammies, he's been struggling all this afternoon, and has finally gone into the wall, unfortunately. However, oh, meanwhile, there's uh, talk about Ferraris going off. There's another one going off. There's Pren. And the Ferraris, which I said, were doing so well earlier on, Jess. They were doing well in qualifying. They were up there in the top five, six positions. Well, to at least in the fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth position. Now they're all down the back. So, um, never mind about that one, though. Saying that, we've got Chicano. He's the uh, really the sole surviving Ferrari right now in the top ten. He's so far in seventh. Doing an okay job so far, just keeping himself clean and comfortable. He's a little bit further behind Essa. Might I say, by the way, the one who's impressing me so far in this race has got to be Vectro. He came from 11 position. He said, if I get a top 10, I'll be surprised. So far, where is he? Fifth position. Doing a stellar job. He's a, Yes, he might be a little bit further back than his teammate. About, uh, what, about 10 seconds nearly. About 5, 6 seconds, actually. Uh, 7.4 seconds behind Big Kid Daddy then. So, about 8 seconds behind his teammate. A stellar job, might we say, for the Dutchman, who is really not comfortable at this circuit. And no, my luck now will probably spin off somewhere. And I hope that doesn't happen. So oh, if that does evil. happen, I'm going to cry. <laughs> Meanwhile, Big Daddy still on the hunt for Ethan. Yeah, exactly. Nice to see those two battle. And the good sportsmanship they showed earlier on in the race. It just, it is nice for people to do that. We haven't seen many drivers have done that 
in many races and uh, if, if they do show that it just goes to show that they didn't mean to do that it, we're trying to go for a move it didn't work out for them and and obviously Ethan's ahead of him now but Big Kid Daddy is looking very prancy in the Lamborghini of course trying to get past on the S's and, and then he's looking quite close we're on the gearbox of Ethan actually and the final podium spot is at stake here, but it's going to be far from over as we've got, two, well, three more laps to go, including this one on lap eight before we go to the final one, of course, as uh, they, they go through. And we are starting to see who's shining. And uh, what I've just noticed as well, it may not be the same order, but the top three in it running at the moment are actually the top three in the championship. Top four, to be fair, Jeff. So the big daddy, I think he's fourth in the championship, is he not? Yeah, yeah, he's fourth. So the top four are actually the top four, except top five, actually. Top five, yeah, that that uh, top no, not top six actually. Top yeah, seven. Yeah, well, there we go. That is, top is, seven. Everyone's running in order. <laughs> this is this is this is current events. It, it's, it's, except tennis and jazz man, they're swapped around. Yeah, they swapped around. Well, I'll switch back around after this race. That makes not too care. By the way, just noticing. By the way, that's overtake. You're seeing the blue dot on the. Uh, Minimap. He's getting lapped in a few moments' time by Tess. He's been in the pit lane for damage. That's just how much time he lost. Big Daddy, though, looking for the hunt, looking for the overtake. Essa, meanwhile, as well. He's getting close behind his fellow Porsche friend of Vectro. Behind them, we've got Davies out and Zap 101 together. They're closing up on every person as well. That's the McLaren, the Mercedes, and the Ben. The Ferrari are just setting up just ahead as well. So, Everyone, well, brilliant. We've got one, two, three, four, five little, uh, well, five little main battles going on so far. It's the McLaren versus the Mercedes. Of course, the beautiful 650, I think that is the McLaren. And one of my favourite looking cars. I've got to say, the McLaren, definitely my favourite TT3 car. It just looks gorgeous uh, compared to some other cars that just look very big. Big and fast, however. Matt Bentley, number 37. The car that won, of course, earlier this year in the Bar First. Uh, 12 hours, a beautiful car, a beautiful victory for them as well. Of course, we went to Bar first just over a week ago. The Bentley did not win that race. It was a Lamborghini fest for that one. However, Lamborghini looking to take the victory here today. So far, in just over uh, under 10 laps, they've already pulled out a 17 second lead on third position of Ethan. That just shows you how strong that Mercedes, uh, that Lamborghini is. I'm used to saying Mercedes winning because the Mercedes, of course, remember last season, last couple of seasons, we had a certain driver who's in the chat winning everything and dominating races. Well, so far and now he's gone. We've just got Tennis and Jazzman winning everything. We wish he was back. Uh, I think he's gone to a set, of course. Uh, meanwhile, though, we've still got two familiar faces battling together. Let's pick your daddy. Is he having a look up the inside? A little bit too far back there. He'll be very brave or lunging one. Ethan covers it ever so slightly, gives him a don't try it potential. That one's a bit wide. Now, Lamborghini versus Porsche down the straight. Porsche with its uh, flat six versus the monster engine in the back of that Lamborghini. Lamborghini should just be able to get the toe then, but Ethan's going to cover the inside line, force him to go around the outside. Let's see if he can do it then. A long way round the outside. Tries to do it, camera just about working with us then. Down into turn number 12, can't do it yet again. Ethan holding that inside line perfectly. Binky Danny trying to switch around the outside there. Ethan now, I'll try and give him the squeeze, but it looks like yeah, he does do so. Good uh, positioning from Ethan. Try and force his opponent the long way around. This is great defending and great attacking from these two drivers. As we come on to now the fun lap of this race in just a few seconds. Zout has a penalty with overtake. Zout and Davies Zout still battling. Must we just keep an eye on this battle? Like, this is the one we'll be looking for. Ethan forced to go to the inside line. Big Daddy trying to go on the outside. Bit of contact there for good measure. Uh, that'll all be fair there. Uh, no uh, blame free for the driver. That's kind of uh, awkward position there. So, fair to either of them. Fun lap of this race, by the way, for the top two. And now, in a little bit of a moment, we have calm second back down to the Zout continuing battle and that's between Zout and Zout <laughs> and let's see who's going to win on the battle of the Zout and see Mickey da uh, sorry uh, Davy Zout trying on the other Zout and Zout 101 running a little bit too deep there let's see if Davy Zout can try sliver on down the inside in T number one brave to do it down the inside there we'll keep an eye on the battle up from by the way between third and fourth uh, We'll cut to that in just a few moments. So let's see if Davies out's going to launch one down the inside. Yes, he is going to go down the inside. Has he made the corner though? The big bent leap runs a bit too Ooh. wide. How do you get the car on the exit? No, he can't because there goes Zap back up the inside. 
So that's not going well for Davies. That was just a little bit uh, over committed on the brakes. A bit too deep there for good cause. That's put him back down in to 10th position. Now I believe that is the battle for the reverse grid pole position. Might we say. Now Slicker actually. Fair play to him. Kind of on this battle as well. He's a little bit further back about uh, 1.2 seconds. Just noticing it there. But back to third and fourth position. The one we all want to be looking for, Jess. And let's see, is Vicky Daddy going to have a lunge down here? I don't think so. He's a bit too far back. Though we've seen lunges from a far way back before and it's worked. Won't be doing it this time around, though. Just thinks about it. Forces Ethan just to go slightly defensive, just slightly more out of position. But I think Ethan just should hold the line, though. Really big wheel on the rear end, though, for him. The Porsche, he said, has no com confidence in the car. Rear end really wa wanting to work with him. And so far, the number 14 just holding off that bright yellow mustard Lamborghini. The number two, the number 92 Lamborghini. Then they'd say Ethan just has two corners to go. Meanwhile, crossing the line, by the way, Tinnis dominating this race. Going slowly. One, two, four. The top two. Yet again, we didn't even know it was They've been just keeping it nice and cool and collected. Through the last corner, is he going to dive around the inside? He thought about it. If it covers the outside line, it goes too wide, though. Let's see if he could actually thought about it. Got a bad exit. Ethan just somehow going to make third position in this race. Finally, just about getting it. Tip Biki Daddy beaten to fourth yet again this afternoon. And those two are going to be having an absolutely amazing battle throughout the race. Battling it away. And I think those two, with a show of respect, they're flashing the lights with each other. I think those two are happy as uh, someone has retired right at the end there. And that's that 101 out of the race right at the end now what has happened there because he is out and we didn't notice it then i just noticed it just at the very end due to the lag spot z101 has retired now he was in between davies out and slicker so i'm wondering has he dropped or has he had contact doesn't look like there has been any damage with slicker front end looks absolutely okay there as he plants into the gravel there and uh into our camera screen darren sinclair 11th friend across the line backwards in the 12th. <laughs> and we're just waiting for good old overtaker down the back. But I'm wondering what has happened to Zat 101 there, Jess? I will have a look in the chat to see what happened there. But again, Lambo dominating once again. And the, the first season I've ever commentated um, in the GT3s was, was on the Xbox One. And the Lambos kind of dominated that league as well. So uh, I, it's not a... Um, unfamiliar sights to me anyway. Obviously, it's an unfamiliar sight to um, the PS4 because we're used to the Mercedes. As, yeah, I, 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 don't, I still don't know why uh, Zout 101 is retired. Maybe it might be his pedal settings or maybe he just had a massive shunt. But um, um, he'll be starting last um, in race two anyway because only the top nine get reversed. So, Tinnis wins the race. He'll be starting in ninth place in the feature Jazzman in second. He'll be starting eighth in the feature. Rotary will be starting ahead of them in seventh. He's third in this race. Fourth place is Big Kid Daddy. He'll be starting sixth. Then we got Vetro, who uh, finished fifth. He'll be starting... Oh, oh, I don't even know. Uh, Esso racing in sixth. Chicano seventh. Every person will be starting second in the feature race. He's in eighth at the moment. And Davey Zapp will be on pole position. Um, and he's in ninth place in this race. Quoppy was using a bit of tactics there. Then we got Slicker. Dan Sinclair, Pren, Overtaker, and um, he retired on lap nine, Evil. So with out. So I think I don't know. I don't know where that was really, to be honest. Where, but it was. It was. It was one lap before the end, or two laps before the end. So a bit of a shame, Dad. You almost made it, but I think someone went wrong with him. But again, we'll find out in the chat for you. Indeed, seeing Gazza and uh, Benji in the chat, by the way. Yeah. Saying Mercedes and wins sad face, of course. Low two. Very familiar with the Mercedes. And um, since they've disappeared, Mercedes has dropped off the side of the cliff. So um, maybe it was just, maybe it's just the drivers that are making that Mercedes win. Who knows? But then again, Tennis and Jasmine, another one, two this season. I think, what, is that the third one, two so far this season? The constructors pretty much wrapped up, Jesse. Might as well say, isn't it? Well, don't say that too early on, Evil. I know they've been dominating the first uh, three races now, but. We've still got a long way to go of this season. Now, our circuits, which are more designed to to, uh, to different cars rather than Lambos, potentially, or maybe they can keep their consistency up. We'll have to wait and see, of course. But, you know, Tinnis, 
Tillis is a person that likes these reverse grid races because he climbed up the order as well. Jazzman has a little bit of mixed bag sometimes, but hopefully he can turn the tables round in those uh, feature races and uh, get a better result as well. But Davies out is going to be under pressure then. He's going to be starting on pole position. Not a familiar side, but, you know, I I'm a person that's not used to starting near the front of these uh, feature races or front on any race. How much pressure do you think these drivers are going to go into if they're not used to starting right at the front? Indeed. So I'm um, just seeing, by the way, apparently Jazzman couldn't see Zat 101 on the circuit. That could, uh, that's a little bit concerning there. So uh, some potential um, small server issues right there, but hopefully uh, those niggles will sort themselves out in just a couple of moments when we get into the second race. Of course, that can be for a numerous different amount of things. I've got to wonder, Jess, though, especially in this reverse race, Tina starting ninth. Jazzman starting eighth down the back. Now, we, this is always the opportunity, Jess, for these other drivers just to try and get a few uh, positions because we know and seen in the past, Jazzman in these kind of reverse grid races have had very unfortunate mistakes. Remember last season, Jess, uh, with Wolf um, had a few incidents. Remember in a good old, well, the circuit which no one wanted, but of course, we ended up getting that was uh, Ella Sartre, of course, Rowan, which did kind of end well for some of the drivers. Some, I might say, didn't end well. Jazzman ended up not finishing the first four races in that season. That rather set his championship uh, up because he didn't win two races later on this season. But so far, looking a lot more comfortable up here in this season. Yeah, he is. And honestly, it does depend on the car as well and also the track conditions because some people may prefer the track conditions one season over another, may suit them a bit more as well. And it just shows that the pecking order changes every season for some of these drivers, the ones who are performing up there as well. I was very impressed with Vetro this race. He he wanted the top 10 and he got P5 and he, and he pretty much stayed there throughout this entire race. Even his teammate, Ethan, I believe in the first race, is saying how much he has uh, grown in terms of... Uh, racing and he's gone back to the Vetro that we've all grown and love with um, his uh, fantastic racing and great form as well so uh, he'll still be fifth in the standings I believe after this race and uh, he's hoping to stay there as well other people that I think will hope to have a better race Prent, um, Zhao of course obviously because he has retired from the session every person as well not doing too bad uh, hopefully he can keep that consistency up this race Slicker I think will need to have a better race too but I think everyone can find some room of improvement, of course. Um, I think, obviously, Tinnis would want to be winning the next race as well. But everybody else, sure, they're going to find ways to uh, just perform just a little bit better to um, um, to lay an edge on their competitors. But we'll have to wait and see. I'm very excited to see how this race brings. And I think we're just waiting for the grid order because I think Jazzman is sorting that out. And then we can get this race underway. Indeed. Well, uh, seeing by the way, uh, some people asking uh, in the uh, in our actual uh, PSN chat if we were doing interviews after race one, of course, uh, we were told we are not doing that by our coordinator. They want to uh, make sure the drivers uh, remain full focus, apparently. So uh, let, we'll get all the interviews in after, of course, the second race. I would love some interviews between the first two races, unfortunately. That can be very awkward indeed. No, uh, Ethan apparently was in the ready to interview chat, but uh, for us, uh, I think a bit difficult to pull him in right now. So I think we'll uh, potentially just do interviews later on, Jess. Yeah, I think so as well. I think, <laughs> yeah, um, I, 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 cause otherwise it's, it, it, it's going to lose a bit of focus. I, I usually hate interviewing in between races because, you know, I just want to just get my mind set on certain things. Maybe some people will be getting a, uh, a drink or maybe listening to some music just before the next race just so they can get their mind into things as well. And I, I expect a lot of these drivers have um, pre-race um, um, rituals going through their minds before the race. They may be doing something which helps them get their mind set for the upcoming race, of course. Uh, when you were racing in Formula Rookie, did you have uh, something um, in your mind of what you were doing before the races just to get you focused, perhaps? Uh, what I was doing in between the races was uh, praying that I wasn't <laughs> murdered by uh, certain 
certain things which uh, happened anyway. Um, I, I didn't end well, but I led a race. That's all that matters. I led a race. Best overtake. Overtook seven drivers in one lap. I'm, I uh, hold that record. Most overtakes in one lap, I think, potentially. I'll have to check that in a PS4, but I think I might actually own a record. Now somehow. I'm... I don't know how the technical was over two laps, but it was in one span of a lap. I went from seventh to first, which I was happy for, at least. Um, I, I, I don't think I, I'll ever beat that again, of course, but um, anyway, <laughs> but of course, the drivers, most likely they'll just be sitting there just kind of thinking, okay, what am I going to do? Just going for pre-race checks almost. I know uh, especially like Ethan, he does that quite often. Like, he just relaxes, just gets himself prepared, just thinks, okay, think calm, think collectively, and know what you can do, of course. You're in a good position. If he's starting in kind of that midfield um, in these reverse grid races, anything can happen. And especially for some of the drivers uh, who will start on pole position, that the, the, the pressure can be very, um, uh, very hard and very difficult, of course. Um, I know previously from when I started on pole position, uh, like Overtaker and Pren will be doing right now, it can be very, very easy just to make a mistake, just to get those nerves to go through you. Because when you're when you're at the front, when you're on pole, the nerves are a lot higher than when you're sitting there down the middle of the field. You're just kind of a bit more calm, you're a little less tense. But on pole, everyone's looking at you. You've got the whole kind of, well, well the whole stream pretty much is going to be focusing your eye, its eyes on you. And you, you can get to you. The pressure can really just get to you, of course. And, Speaking to like me and Venture, Venture of course, who, who, uh, he obviously he'll, uh, he'll admit as well, he, he does not like the most intense pressure of course. Some people just don't dead reserve it, they get goosebumps at the start of the races. I had that a few times as on pole, you just really do it. And then it's either when you get that first lap done, Jess, all that kind of goosebumps, all that kind of nerves, it just goes away and you just get yourself into that room. And that's what these drivers are gonna be wanting to do. I thought it was the top nine that got reversed. It looks like everyone's got reversed, I think. Almost certainly everyone. I I, thought, I was told the top nine, so uh, I was wrong about that. So it's not uh, Zout that's going to be starting pole position. So uh, my bad about that. But, um, uh, well, Davey's out is the one I'm talking about, not Zout. Zout, he retired. Um, he'll be starting at the back of the grid because it's unfair if he's on pole because if you, you have to finish in order to uh, do that. So we'll, go, we'll take away your race order for uh, the second race, and it's all been reversed. So Overtaker will be starting on pole with Pren in second, and Darren in third, Slicker in fourth place, Davies out in fifth, every person in sixth, Chicano seventh, Essa eighth, Vetro in ninth, and then we got the likes of Big Kid Daddy, Rotary, Jazzman, Tinnis, um, who is last the leading bunch there, and we got Zout, who will be starting in last place as he did not finish. So that is your running order for the reverse grid here today. And a little bit hazier than what we've seen in, in terms of qualifying and the race then. So different conditions. We may see drivers be a little bit more, it'll be a little bit more difficult for them, but they have to learn, live with it and uh, pick up the pressure a little bit for these drivers. But for some of them, they're probably going to like it even more, in particular the ones that did well in qualifying. So... We'll have to wait and see what happens. And don't forget, it is a rolling start. AOR rolling start, of course. So they'll be restricted to a certain speed until they get to the formation zone. And then just before the start finish straight, that's where they head to the acceleration zone. And then it'll be up to uh, the pole sitter to uh, set the pace and start the race from then on. So a little bit more time to think, Evil, on your race strategy as you do your rolling start. Yeah, well, the race strategy pretty much easy, Jess. This is going to be uh, no stop to, uh, from the start to the finish, of course. No need to stop whatsoever. Of course, if you get damaged, then you've got to, got to think to you come in the pit lane. Depends how much damage it is. If it's a suspension, you're going to be in a lot of trouble. But of course, these G3 cars are pretty good at uh, the suspension damage. Everyone's uh, made sure they remember the uh, five second window before you set themselves off. So that's good to see everyone doing that one absolutely perfectly then so Davey's out just going to lead themselves off then and pull over to the side as everyone just gets themselves all into that nice order position then this is always kind of the uh little messy bit at the start of the race where everyone's just kind of bundled up in a bigger uh, 
Lions are trying to get everyone into the right position. Betro has put himself already back into ninth. He's in the correct starting order. Ethan, well, he's in ninth. Ethan should be around there as well. So, yeah, so tennis, yeah, so top rim, the rear end have all got themselves in the correct order. It's waiting for um, everyone else just to slot back there. Um, I'll have a look. Which we're waiting for. I got told it's reverse top nine. And uh seems a bit weird right now, Jess. Uh, unless they're doing the full reverse grid. Yeah, that's why I got that's why I got a bit confused. Because I was told top nine, and then when Jazzman showed us the grid, it was every single driver reversed out of the ones that finished. So, yeah, so uh, someone's miscommunicated some stuff with us there in the threads and the forums and what I've been told. Never, um, ne ne never mind. Uh, it, it, it happens at times. But at least Jazzman put the picture up because otherwise we would have been talking bonkers and got confused and like, hang on, why is Overtaker starting on pole? So, you know, that, I mean, you know, at least they communicated it sooner rather than later. Uh, you know, but anyway, it's, I think it puts a little bit more pressure on the ones who were first, second and third and maybe fourth as well to climb their way up the order. But, you know, I mean, they have climbed their way up before. It's Jazzman's gone off the circuit there. Hopefully, hopefully we won't see any collisions before we actually get going because that will be a little bit of a, um, an issue there. We did before, uh, in the past, of course. That was, uh, remember, I think it was a couple of seasons ago, Jazzman and Archilla collided but that was more uh jazz man just making sure archer uh, wasn't lagging into anyone so they ended up lagging into each other so uh that's what happened there of course and uh those two had their little banter down the back of the field the nerve i a couple of races a well a couple of seasons ago i think it was about a season or two ago i can't exactly remember but uh, a while ago but meanwhile ferrari ferrari audi uh then comes ferrari then comes the mclaren uh sorry then comes the bentley as we do apologize for the uh, horrible uh, camera angle down there. Then we've got the McLaren. Then we've got Ferrari. Porsche. Porsche. Then comes the Lambo. Then comes Porsche. Then comes the two Lamborghini starting at the back. Then comes Zout. He will be starting plum dead last in this race. And hopefully we'll see him potentially trying to come through the field at the beginning. But this has got to be even more pressure now for the likes of Overtaker who really struggled in the first race now he's going to struggle potentially unless he's got that car set up more for the feature race this could be a long afternoon we will potentially be seeing some carnage down into turn number one and reverse correct we've seen it before overtake up his first pole position ferrari one two first time we've seen that since i think about season nine at least when the ferrari was still in its original bop format waiting for the last car to get himself into position that's zat 101 ferrari ferrari then comes the alley then comes the other ferrari then the bentley that's your top four three of them are ferraris all of them are going to be pure racing down towards the first corner let's see them it's getting ready to go just a few times and it looks like overtaker's bolted straight away then overtake a good start maybe have been a bit early then potentially Friend rather left behind, then comes Darren Sinclair in third. Up the inside, I think looking for the Bentley down the inside. Ventura down there as well, looking for the inside. He's already up to eighth position. Good start from Ventura there. Good start from even his teammate, colliding with his teammate as well. So the two Porsches slightly colliding there, further back. Looks like they're side by side between everyone else further back as well. But Overtaker leads them from Friend in second. Darren Sinclair in third ahead of every person in fourth. Davies out in fifth position, but everyone seems to got themselves off the line. A-OK -okay in the first sector. Uh, Essa up into eighth position. He's dropped behind Vetro as well, but the pulse is all in a big line as well, Jess. But crucially, to me, it looks like uh, Jazzman and Tinnus have had terrible starts. Yeah, Jazzman all the way up into last place with Zhao getting a good start, up into 13th place as well. But it just goes to show that uh, you, you may be not used to starting up, up the back and uh, trying to claim positions up. But Tinnis, it's already trying to make a move on the one of the Ferraris of Chicano then going towards turn 10 as they both go side by side as well. And we've also got uh, one, we've got the Mercedes and Zouch trying to uh, make a move for good measure. Nice to see him climbing up the order as much as he can as well. Overtaker and friends still P1 and P2 at the moment, pulling up a good gap between everybody Daddy. else, Big Kid Daddy trying to make a move on S. A bit of contact there, which is not good, but Big Kid Daddy is staying ahead in at ninth place, doing well 
so far. Ace has dropped down a bit as well. Vetro made up one position as well. He's trying to get Paul. They made contact. That was so close. That looked like a nudge, Jess, from Ethan up there. That was a nudge from Ethan. Wow. I think. I'm pretty certain. I don't know if that was some Lagler or Vetro locked the race there. That looked like he just carried some mysterious more momentum then because I don't know if that was contact. I don't think it was. It might have just been a bit of uh, trickery of the eyes there. I think is he getting out of the way of Ethan? I think so. Yeah, he's getting out of the way of his teammate then. So two teammates switching around. Bicky Dacky down the inside of Slicker. Slicker dropping like a boat right now. He's driving more like a boat right now. The Ferrari rather needs oars on the circuit. He's got no grip. And all of a sudden, dropping down the field. But now Ethan up the six. So his teammate doing the uh, duty there. And now he's going to try and hold that position. Vicky Daddy then holding on for eighth position. Uh, Tinnus now up to tenth position as Jazzman's now got himself up to twelfth. Chicano down into fourteenth position and Zout up to thirteenth now. So a few switching down there. But so far up front, it is Ferrari Ferrari. Then comes the Audi of Darren Sinclair. So, so far, so good for the two Ferraris uh, up front compared to the two Ferraris down at the back. Fred rather sliding that car around the circuit. Friend's got a good chance of winning this race, by the way. He was doing really well in the first race. Overtake here, he might be strong, but he made a few mistakes. But so far, pulls himself a 2.3 second advantage on the rest of the field. He is running a but so slightly less field mind than everyone else. But of course, it will be okay in the long run. Darren Sinclair and every person. Bit of a gap then down to Davies out. Then we got Rotary. Now, Ethan right now, he's got himself in a probably... If not out of the top 10 position, he's got the best chance of winning this race as well. Because compared to Jazzman and uh, Tinnus, they're quite far behind Ethan. Just setting himself, he's in a good position right now. He could potentially be on course for a victory today. Now, we never say never in these types of races because anything can happen. Especially when Jazzman is on the move. He's uh, so far, I think he's just got ahead of Slicker into 10th position. So Slicker and Jazzman switching around. And looks like Tinnus, Jess has gone off the road because that, yeah, down in uh, 14th position. And again, I, like I said before, these feature races, for whatever reason, Jasmine and Tinnis just seem to not get the grip and get not the pace in. I think I probably just commentated cursing because I said um, at the start of the feature race where we're going through the formation lap, but we didn't have the car's in a formation lap because I forgot to change the screen. I do apologise, but well, well, luckily I changed it at the start of the race, so that was good news as well. But yeah, um, I think Jazz Valentin and Stone hold a good... Well, Jazz Man especially just nailed a good record on feature races. Meanwhile, Rotary yeah. and the Bentley are having a nice battle going up into turn number one. Looks like Davey is going to have a good run here. He's got yeah, Vetro behind him. Yeah, he's a bit too far back. Meanwhile, I think he's stuck in a... Porsche sandwich because he's got Vetro right behind him as well who's also looking for a move and another fast driver of oh, Big Kid Daddy too so uh, Davey is it, it, it's like I think Davey's loving this he was getting involved in battles in Barfer so you would expect him to try and defend quite nicely but will he get used to defending the likes of Vetro the likes of Ethan and the likes of Big Kid Daddy Vetro almost having a look there as they go towards it's Little King myself. Yeah, this should compromise him quite a bit, actually. Here comes Big Kid Daddy on Vetro then. Going yeah. towards turn number... I think it's turn number 10 as he goes around. No. Oh, he's going to get the switch back, maybe. He's going to... Yeah. Oh, yeah. A bit compromised there, See, so... What happened there, Jess, Larry? He got on the curb, so he tried to turn it in. You remember that curb there? It's going to catch you out. And uh, now that's easy to do. By the way, uh, Tim has now moved himself back up the top. And uh, do you know what I said of going down the inside there? He's going down the inside of South. So he was doing what Big uh, Kid Daddy was trying to do on Vetro. There is Jasmine, by the way. He's just sitting further back. We get a nice view from the uh, rear of, uh, well, from the front of Jasmine. As we look through the battle there, here, let's keep on board here. Is Vetro trying to sliver on up the inside? Has a little look at there. And uh, rather, let's see, these two are battled together. He's got through there. Now, before we keep going with Bicky Daddy, let's look over his show. Is Bicky Daddy going to send one up the inside? But optimistic move there. A bit of a nudge then from um, Z from Davies out. And let's see, now around the outside goes Bicky Daddy into the tricky turn. 15, 16, 17, and 18 then. Should be able to do it around the outside, but they can see rear end stepping out on the dirty line there. Miss uh, Bentley Power versus Lamborghini Power. And the Lamborghini just holding on to lat one. Well, not holding on to lat one. Now we're sitting down the inside in retaliation straight away. His favorite move in this race so far going down the inside, but won't work this time around. Unsettling though, and then try down towards turn one. But look behind. Look who it is. 
It's old Jazzman who's having a little look. Let's see, let's see. Where's he gonna go? Well, on board we go. Just sit back, just relax. Try and position up one car as oof, almost colliding there with uh, Davy Zout. Jazzman does slip and run up the inside there. Davy Zout rather squeezed out that Lamborghini. Bit more better on the tracks and on the exit of the corners as well. And now, what Ethan's just hoping for is Ventro he can hold off these two drivers just long enough so he can get himself about a five, six second wind on it because, of course, Jazzman, if he gets some clean air, is going to try and run away a bit. Yeah, I agree, sir. So. Which he almost does. Yep, he almost did there, but obviously Vetro and Ethan will be communicating that much as Ethan's mic is playing up, but, you know, maybe they might have text messaged before the race saying their plans of the race and stuff, and uh, it's nice to see that team work in action now. I think Ethan will be happy of how Vetro is doing. I believe Jasmine does go past Vetro for sixth yeah, place Vetro, now. Vetro's, uh, yeah, has been overtaken then, so uh, exactly when I said he wants to be held back, He's not. Vicky Daddy, I think, spun, actually. He's down in 10th. Vicky Daddy's at oh, contact wow. with Vectro, so that's what's happened there. He's got damage. So, yeah, he has got damage. He's at contact with Vectro. Vectro's going to try and go back around the outside of uh, Jazz. Man, these two have had good battles before. Uh, won't do it there. I'm wondering, as uh, almost gets contact then with Davy Zout. Davy Zout trying around the outside as we just cut it to Zout 101. You went into the pit lane with damage. Uh, more damage there, potentially, is now Vectro in the wars potentially with big daddy we don't know we didn't look at it there because we were just looking at zout seeing what was going on with him as he came in the pit lane unfortunate timing for that one but let's see does veteran look like he's got much damage doesn't look like he's got uh any serious damage so uh it's hard to see slicker up to p12 meanwhile so yeah big daddy in real trouble no pit lane for veteran but big daddy will be in the pit lane so um I'm wondering what's happened there. We cut away with it. And uh, Ventura, a time penalty as well of two seconds for track limit then. So that might be for an issue off the circuit. Meanwhile, his teammates on the move up for fourth. There we go. Fourth already goes, Ethan. Just show, goes to show that he has a, a really, really great start as well. I think the only one from the top three to make the jump, as well as Jazzman, of course, up into sixth place. He's got every person... Um, behind, well, in front of him to try and get past, but surely he's going to get the move done there pretty soon. But them and they're matching on lap times at the moment. Jazzman and every person, every person two minutes seven point eight. Jazzman two minutes seven point five nine nine. So it's going to be harder for every uh, Jazzman to get past every person, but every person's still catching up to Ethan too. So very impressed with every person's pace so far, trying to uh, catch well, basically match. The, the leaders in the championships pace, which is really, really good. So well done to him. Overtaker getting a full second gap over um, Pren. And as we were speaking earlier, Evil, maybe Overtaker was not focusing on the first race too much and was just wanting to uh, focus on the second race, get a good setup there. And uh, that's kind of worked. As a big kid daddy, he's gone to pit for damage, which he got earlier on. Well, yeah, I mean, right now, you've got to look at Overtaker. He's uh, 26.5. He's the quickest driver on the circuit by um, uh, right about half a second. I think next driver to him is the uh, other Ferrari, ironically, of friends. So, uh, Ferraris, like, for once, like, unlike the first race, I said they might be doing well in this race. They were doing, they seem to be in the uh, top five, six positions. But so far in the second race, it seems they've got some more pace. And maybe in the first race, they all just got horrible luck. Dave, Darren Sinclair, by the way, uh, also doing well. He's starting to get caught by Ethan over so slightly about two, three tenths a lap. Uh, every person starting to uh, get clawed in by Jazzman. Now gap is 1.5 seconds. Ethan's starting to bolt up the road more and more. And then we've got Jazzman. Then we've got Vetro sitting himself in that seventh position. He then Davies out. Should be easy enough to pull that gap open. Last that two minute 14. That potentially for damage. And now we see the true pace of Jazzman, two minute 6.4. So now he's got some clean air ever so slightly. Fastest lap straight out the box. Second fast lap in this race is Ethan. Uh, what about what, six tenths slower? Now that is about um, Ethan's tight telemetry he was saying he was thinking about. He said it was about that gap. Uh, meanwhile, I think Davies out's gone off the road somewhere because he suddenly dropped quite far back down the field. He's right behind Vector. Right? Now he's not. So, Davy Zapp struggling in the Bentley, so no regret for him. But back we got Chicano, 
Slacker and Big Kid Daddy, who's right down the back. He's just came out, by the way. He has had a Zap 101. So Zap 101, he's got someone to play with. He's got some company down the back, at least. So that's pretty good for him. But then we go back to Ethan. Man on the mission. Hunting down for third, second, and potentially for the lead. However, could it be Jazzman who's lining up and should easily be able to get past every person, I imagine? Um, Lamborghini versus McLaren, I think, should almost be a straightforward fight. I think maybe even before the breaking zone, McLaren seriously slow in straight line speed. And it's like almost taking candy from a baby, Jazz. <laughs> Yeah, that is an interesting saying that, uh, that that you just said, Evil. But there we go. Jazzman gets a move done comfortably there. And now he's going to challenge Ethan there. And we, we see the nice bow in, in Daytona between Jazzman and Ethan. And also in a bar first as well. So I'm looking forward to seeing how that develops when Jazzman catches up to Ethan. Jazzman being slightly faster than Ethan due to the much cleaner air that Jazzman has got. Uh, Ethan's got a bit of clean air as well, but... Not as much as Jazzman. Jazzman's got a bit more of a buffer to live with. But we'll see when Ethan crosses the line what his lap time is going to be. He's got to go in the two sixes because otherwise Jazzman is going to catch him for dear life. And it's probably going to go for move. And he was four attempts down on that lap. So on his best time. So two minutes, seven, two. So not too bad. I've got to say, Overtaker right now, really impressing me. I mean, he is the quickest driver on the circuit bar Jazzman. He's... You know, I might have uh, might have given him a bit of uh, slate earlier on saying he was struggling. Well, uh, I did say he might be focusing for the second race. Well, so far, so good for the Ferrari. So far, they're on to him. Right now, Pren, he could really be this dark horse in this race. He can really just hold off everyone else because he's kind of he's backing up Darren Sinclair. And if Darren Sinclair then backs up, because at least you back up into Ethan, and then Ethan gets backed up into Jazzman, that's just going to allow the leader, Overtaker, just to pull away ever so slowly more. He's... Still got a long way to go in this race. He's, uh, what, that 8 of 21. We've still got, what, some um, 13, 14 laps to go, give or take. So a long way to go in this race. Um, meanwhile, uh, Tinnus having a look on Vectro 4. That is 6th uh, and 7th position. I think this should be uh, reasonably easy for uh, Tinnus to get past Vectro. Like, Porsche versus Lamborghini should be a little more fair than Porsche versus Mc uh, Lamborghini versus McLaren. But I think... Thing with a bit of a toe. Let's see. You can see on the exit, though. Look, Lamborghini not so pulling up the inside. Now he gets the inside line down towards turn 12. Should just be able to sliver up the inside into six. So good recovery drive so far for Tennis. Vetro doesn't seem to be fighting that one too heavily, though. I think he knows right now his position. Esser up to knife me while he's just got past Davy Zout. Or uh, rather, not got past Davy Zout, actually. Davy Zout just holding that position on. For the time being, between those two drivers there, the Porsche versus the Bentley. Let's see, is uh, Essa going to send one down the inside here? That thing's better off. You can see people attempting down the inside there. He saw it earlier on with uh, Vectro and a few others on Big Kid Daddy, I think it was, or someone else. Exactly, I think it was on the Ferraris. I'm not too certain. But, um, oh, it's a possibility. Back to Ethan we go, Jess. And starting to close up now. 2067 for your lead up. Let's see, Ethan needs to be in the 206, 207, 1. Though he is starting to close in, to be fair, actually. He pulled the gap back down a little bit more. So, despite going slower, he is going quicker. I've noticed as well, actually, Evil. On the last lap, well, not this lap, Tinnis was the only driver to go into the two-minute fives. So, he yeah. is he is, he is, is picking up the pace a little bit. He's forgetting what happened earlier on in the race. And that clean air is definitely helping him just a little bit more. Obviously, they were... Jazz Valentin is the fastest in qualifying and at the moment as well as Overtaker, the fastest in the race, even in the two minute sevens. Everybody else I haven't mentioned it is in the two minute eights, two minute nines. Big Kid Daddy! Jamie Zout's lost it, Jess, so it's caught over there again, second time. He's gone off the road there. Aww. Big Kid Daddy, uh, I think you're about to say he's in the 205s yeah, along that, those lines. Yeah, that, that's what I was about to say. You can read my mind, so, Evil. <laughs> I can read your mind. I just noticed it as well. I just... So a second, I thought I saw asses spinning off the road. No, it was big. It was uh, Davy Zout spinning off the road in tandem almost. Who's in the rear end? That's the uh, tricky turn four, five, and six. Boyle, back to your uh, third sec battle for second, third, fourth, and fifth. Pretty much. Well, that almost sixth. We might as well put sixth in the battle because technically Tillis is kind of going to be in this battle sooner or later. He's closing up. So 
is uh, 2066. He's quicker than his teammate Jazzman. Jazzman right now, three temps up, looking for a low two minute six, about two minute six three. He really wants to be getting ahead of Ethan right now. Ethan wants to be making headway though, because he's kind of stuck in his vision right now. But remember, Jess, compared to uh, with race one, when the leaders were 16 seconds up the road, so far, only six seconds separate the top six, uh, well, the top, well, 15 seconds separate the top six. So, all's not lost for Tinnus. He still can win this race. He's still got a chance. Never say never. So far, look, 207.2 for your lead up, friend. Let's see what his lap time is. Cross his line around about now. Needs to be setting around about the two minute eight, two minute seven, two minute seven, three, two minute eight, dead for Darren Sinclair, two minute eight, dead for Ethan, two minute five, nine. For Jazzman, that proves to me, Jess, that Jazzman, definitely a man on the mission as he almost completely cuts turn one on the inside curve. Might give himself a little bit of a penalty or a ding for that one. A bit of a ding dong battle we're going to see as well. But yeah, Jazzman has really catched to the back of uh, Ethan now. And, you know, Tinnis and Jazzman, they're even on pace now. But oh, <laughs> someone's gone off. Oh, that God. Was, oh, that was Ethan. And Ethan nowhere to go. And contact straight into the Ferrari. Nothing that last you could battle do there. over with uh, Ethan and Jasmine. <laughs> well, yeah, nothing you could do. Vetro uh, comes through as well. They're up to seventh sixth position then. So that was unfortunate. He just couldn't get out of the way, of course. Couldn't get any more live. Friend lost it on the curbs. And that's the issue. That's unfortunate. That is the curse of uh, Mr. Rotary there, unfortunately. Evil. Often he's so, so good. I, I said he could win this race. Again, every time I say you could do it. Can, you just, can, way, can you just not say uh, Ethan about winning the race and then uh, he'll probably nah, win well, the race? <laughs> well, I've cursed him again. Well, it looks like Tim is now getting himself a clean suit. That means, by the way, Vex is going to be up to fifth position despite that penalty he's got in two seconds. Looks like he's going to get a comfortable potential fifth. Though, anything going by my curses today could be anything. Uh, that'll definitely be a lot of damage on Friend's car. I don't think he'll hold up Vex for two months. I think Vex as far as Pren really right now, you'll almost get out of the way of Vetri because you don't want to be colliding any more than you're doing, but he's uh, just holding the line there just slightly. He's oh. got all the right to do so, the damage, and I think Vetri oh wants to get God. through, almost rear ends him, and um, let's see. Pren with the front damage, you'll come in the pit lane, holding up Vetri slightly more low. Every person, he's behind Ethan, I think Ethan getting himself out of the way, getting himself off the racing line, he does do so. As you can see, again, Vetra trying to go around the outside. Does do him this time on the outside there. Rather easy move, unfortunately, because Pren has that damage in the pit that he comes. But uh, as well as Ethan, big racing engine, unfortunately. Nothing either of those drivers could do. And that awkward situation where you know you're going for an incident. You can't avoid it. Slam the brakes on the best you can. Ethan did do so, but unfortunately... Those kind of contacts, it's that kind of incident where nothing you can do. You're just going to go for an incident. you just got to brace for it. Yeah, exactly. A bit of a shame, of course. But uh, that map will promote Jazzman and Tinnis to the potential podium positions. They have got Darren Sinclair and Overtaker to worry about now. And then they could potentially see their eyes. Or maybe another one to finish. But maybe because um, the Overtaker, though, is impressing the doubters wrong. So it's going to be a little bit more tricky for them. But... We shall see. We're potentially we're almost halfway out. We are halfway into this race now as most of the cars now go through towards turn 10. And we've got Ethan and Fred into the pits. I don't think either of them will be happy with that. I think there'll be some words after the race, that's for sure. But, you know, it, it happens. I lose the, cur the car on the curb quite a few times on different games and it just catches you out just a little bit more. So um, that's allowed every person in Essa to climb up as well. Davies out as well in eighth. You know, they're going to get some good points out of this. And could be a good, could be a good result. So I'd there, Jess. Uh, I just noticed uh, Vetro hasn't got the buffer right now. I think he's still, unless he's got more penalties. He's got two seconds. He's not got the biggest buffer to every person. It's, uh, what, 1.1 seconds. So he's got a little bit of a movement right now. He needs to push a little bit harder right now. Two minutes nine the last lap. Uh, those two drivers, by the way, those flat gaggle of car fifth downwards. Absolutely, uh, quite far back. I was about to say, uh, Friend set a two minute three there, and my brain was about to say that's a three minute three because it came at the pit lane evil. So, uh, I was about to say that's a biblical lap time, but um, not not to be so uh, fast. Bicky Daddy, meanwhile, he's uh, set himself down into that kind of lonely land of 13th off that contact earlier on, hasn't had much luck 
Uh, you'd have thought maybe he made some headway towards even, but unfortunately hasn't done so uh, due to maybe he's gone off the road a few more times. We don't know. Darren Sinclair, meanwhile, being made easy pickings, I imagine, by Jazzman. Indeed, he has made easy pickings by Jazzman. Jazzman now up to second position. Two minute five, eight, two minute five, three for his teammate Tinner. So these two drivers now taking two seconds a lap out of your leader. And that can only be at least around about that 14, Jess. We should potentially see a battle for this race lead, according to my uh, brain and the new telemetry I'm picking up from my uh, screen. From, and from your mind as well, because you, you, you're you good at predicting when we could see a battle for the lead, potentially. So hopefully we could see that, because I, I, we, we've seen it in Hockenheim, I remember as well, where we had uh, uh, a few people, well, last season, go for the race victory in the last lap. So we could potentially see it here as well. But meanwhile, Chicano is catching up to Davies out in the S's section, gaining a bit more corner speed than Davies out by the looks of things. But... Let's see if he can get on the straight. Oh, he almost took the Indy car line there. Um, that, is, that is not what you want to do, my friends. But, you know, only one person getting a penalty right now. I thought more people get a lot more penalties. But, obviously, the GT3 cars are um, less prone to getting penalties than, obviously, the F1 cars. Because they go a bit slower. Whereas, at the F1 cars, you can just go flat out. And a few people might just go on the curb accidentally. And that, that's a penalty straight away there. Now... Tinnis is lining up down Sinclair now. Only nine temps separate between them now. And it could be easy pickings. It could not be. Tinnis still in a, consistently in the two minute fives, which um, if you're a driver even, if you're consistently can set in that lap time, lap after lap, that's going to give you some confidence, that's for sure. And Jazzman, he's setting in sight. I think he's going to get fired a few seconds per lap on Overtaker as well. But we're going to see... Tinnis was almost going to have a lunge there into the start finish straight, but he's probably going to wait till turn one. Now, three temp separate between the both of them now. See, there's a little brave on the brakes. Be very brave on the brakes down the inside into turn number one. He can do it, and he does do it. He's sliding up the inside. Has he got the position through? Certainly wow. not. He has got the position through. Completely sideways. <laughs> Same was on the external cam there, but he was completely rear end locked up. You could hear it there. Uh, at least I could hear it through my headphones. You could hear the tyre squealing there. But he was going up the inside, no matter what. Even if that ended up in contact, there was Darren Sinclair rise of it to get out of the way there because that was a very locks up and sideways tennis up the inside there. I don't see all the takes like that very often, by the way. And, uh, well, good old tennis, the uh, Dutchman passed the English driver. All right. Pretty, so I, I keep wanting to say he's from Scotland because it's such a Scottish name to my brain, but... According to uh, the site, he is from Britain. So he could be Scottish. I, I, I don't know. I haven't seen. But I mean, while every person rather taking the uh, the Sebastian Vettel route through that corner, going on the grass and not getting suspension ready. But that will be a time penalty if he doesn't back off that one there because he was rather off the road by quite a margin. And I expect to see him getting a time penalty if he's not too careful. Which you can't, I mean, well little further back he's still trying to close up on Davies out the Bentley just holding on that position for eighth and ninth position and now really just got to wait Jess and the waiting game begins for your top two 206 v 207 so these overtakers started to improve the pace ever so slightly now maybe trying to uh, position himself later on trying to defend ever so slightly Ten, uh, overtaker doing an okay job either way on course for his best position so far this season. So far in the lead of this race. We finish in the lead. It's potential. There's a small potential. Of course, anything can happen. Jasmine and Tinnis, they could trip over and make mistakes, of course. Remember, those two are starting to catch each other as well, but by very small, minuscule margins, might we say, as every person rather mounting the curb into turn number 19 right now. Everyone pushing very hard, and every person right now in this field driving. Well, I'm talking about every person. We've got every person so far in sick. That's a lot of that's a lot of saying the same name and saying two sentences in the same sentence. And it, it, it's a confusing name sometimes. Every person when you're talking about everyone in the field and you're referring to every person. Exactly, but that, that's why I'm saying different things to different people. But you know, every person's doing well as well. I do believe Zout will be. 
I think it will be lapped anytime soon if he's not careful. Well, I'd be disappointed, hasn't he? He, he, he? He's not had the best weekend, has he, really? Um, well, weekend in the game, that is not... Um, weekday. We, yeah, it's not yeah, the best race day. Yeah, yeah, no, not at the right race day. Well, if it, if it was in real life, it's the weekend. That's what I was trying to say, but there we go. But yeah, so I was going to hope to finish because if you finish, you score points. And if you don't finish, you don't score points. So, you know, that's going to add that extra motivation. And Jasmine now six seconds behind Overtaker. So he's not finding the sexy would, we would have liked, but we've still got quite a bit of chunk of this race to go. So it's not over yet for Jasmine. Tinnis, three seconds behind his teammate. Now two seconds behind his teammate. So I wonder if Tinnis is going to have a nice battle with Jazzman as well. Dan Sinclair again having another good race. Look, just like we've seen last week in Bathurst. So well done. Good job for him so far as well. Chicano is looking like he's going to have a better result as well in ninth place. Is he going to try and have a lunge? He's a bit too further back yeah, on Davies back. out. Yeah, too far back. So... He stays in ninth place, but still, um, he's going to have his head held high. That's for sure that he's having a much better race than last time about with Essa in seventh, doing a great job as well. I think he'll be happy with his performance so yeah. far. He's got himself in this gaggle of cars with Vetro uh, and every person so far, Vetro. R rather unfortunately, and uh, ho holding the line for the Porsche team. And I'd love to know where Ethan would have been in this battle because he would have been right in this kind of gaggle. He's we're setting paces a little bit quicker than Jasmine. He's around the same pace. Would he have hold on to that? Who knows? Because well, right now, Tennis is taking about, what, a half a second a lap out of his teammates. So, you know what? I've, I reckon, I reckon at this rate they got, that uh, with five seconds, six seconds, that Jasmine right now, Hasn't got the pace to win this race. I don't think he's going to win this. I think Overtaker, if, if these two start battling, which by the gap starting a full jet, it was about three, four seconds a couple of laps ago. Now it's down at two. A half a second lap out of it. It could be a potential here. I mean, what, we've got six, seven laps to go. Gap is, what, six seconds. So if it's going to happen, Jess, it's going to happen in the last two laps at this rate due to uh, the uh, pace starting to drop ever so well. Not the pace dropping from Jasmine, but the pace rising from Overtaker. I am so excited for the final few stages of this race. So make sure you stay tuned for the rest of this race because, you know, I mean, Jasmine's penalty could come back to bite him a little bit, though. So I'm what? a bit well, worried about that. Yeah, I mean, well, Jess, look, he's got ahead of uh, Davies out finally. It's Chicano, he's got ahead of him. Uh, I think Ball, look who's behind him. It's his teammate. It's, it's Slicker. It's definitely their teammates. I keep thinking they're teammates. They're in the same car. Are they teammates? It's always hard to tell because all the Ferraris look the same on this game. Uh, it's the number... It's the uh, 53, I think. And that's... Uh, 53, yeah. So they're teammates. It's the 15 and 53, I think, unless I'm mistaken. Which I probably am. And it's probably Friend, which is in the number. Let's see. What number is he in? Drum roll, please. Let's see the number. It's number. Lucky number. Or I don't know. The camera. Come on, camera. Lucky number 63. It, so 63 it's like you're doing 15, bingo calls. 53. <laughs> and it looks like Chicano and Slicker are teammates. No, Slicker's got ahead of Zao as well. So just when I was trying to figure out car numbers, we always thought, I always cut away when there's a battle going on today. Let's just cut to another car and see if there's a battle going on. Let's see. Well, that gap's down to one second. So, penalties meanwhile. Jasmine's got a penalty. That's not good. I've, I've, really I've, I've already said that, uh, Evil, that Jasmine got a penalty, which could come I'm, back I'm, to bite I'm him. Just going around the, uh, I'm just going up the clock right now. I've got so mad. I'm, 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 long afternoon. Evening. Evening, afternoon. I don't even know what, I don't know what time it is. What time is it? Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, Davies out almost spun. That's all I did notice. Then Davies out getting a wiggle on. He's weaving down the straight so like trying to get some tire temperature, and it looks like. So, ugly. we know it's hazy conditions. Maybe the heat's got to me. Who knows? Uh, I mean, it's quite warm in my bedroom right now. I've got the windows shut because it's been raining all day, and well, it's been windy at least. It's been a bit of storm in the UK, and hopefully everyone's been staying safe, of course, during if you're in the UK and the windy weather. I don't know. You might get blown away. That can happen. The storm, of course, you've got to be careful in storming conditions. And right now, this is kind of the opposite of a storm. It's sunny, beautiful skies, a nice hazy day, nice warm uh, Texan afternoon, might you say, where probably you can fry some eggs on the cars. I imagine you probably <laughs> oh my can. God. I don't imagine that would be very nice. No, it, it, it won't, I've got to say. I think it would uh, burn pretty quickly because obviously the, 
the, the, the car temperatures. We will be getting hotter and hotter as the race goes on, but it is getting sunnier, of course, so, you know, it, it could be a little bit easier for the drivers. Tinnis now one and I think it's six tenths now. So if it stays as it is, it could be Tinnis challenging for the race victory, not Jazzman. So maybe there may be a bit of team orders going here um, throughout this race to see, potentially, you know, because if obviously you, you don't want to be losing ground on Overtaker and you want to be getting good points in the team's championship. So if I was Jazzman, I would communicate the penalties to Tinnis and then they could decide what to do with it, really. Indeed. Well, meanwhile, the battle of the two teammates now, as I've been told, they are teammates. Ricardo and Slicker are definitely teammates. So, definitely, definitely teammates. And I thought they were. Uh, yeah, they are, because the two former champions of uh, AOR GT3, so uh, we're teaming together. Pren in the uh, other Ferrari, the fourth Ferrari down the back, and so far the first Ferrari leading this race. Could this be, Jess? We've got, what, one, two, three, four, well, yeah, about four laps to go. Four laps to go, S. For, well, five laps, technically, counting this one. Five seconds the gap. Gap is starting to close, but not by much. Second and third are starting to get close together and battling. Jasmine's got a one-second time penalty. Could we be in for a bit of a surprise right now? Or am I going to curse everyone again? Well, Jasmine's rather going to the inside of the circuit. Is he getting out of the way of his team? Or is he just trying to break the toe ever so slightly and try to play some team brain tactic games right now and try and just unsettle his teammate right now? But the gap down to 4.2 seconds and closing. But Tennis and Jasmine, if these two start banging together, that is all that Overtaker wants to see. If these two battle end up taking each other off, that is a golden goose. Yeah, I've got to say, they, they've got to think strategically here. They've got to think how um, is one of our teammates going to win this race. But obviously, your, your main goal is the Drivers' Championship. Of course, you want to be ahead of each other. We've got Jazzman and Tinnis 1 and 2 right now. And, you know, they're probably working together, but they still it's like every man for themselves, really. So uh, it, it, it's hard to tell, really, between these two what they want to do. But... You could see Overtake, Overtaker just eating time into these guys, but they're not. They're still fighting, and they're still catching up to Overtaker. So maybe that slipstream that Tinnis has got from his teammates quite helping him a little bit. So that's probably what they're doing, trying to get enough um, a good lap time. Maybe he is he going to go for the move? He <laughs> thought about it. He thought ja about it. Jasman, Jasman is definitely challenging Tinnis. I've got to say, it's not letting Tinnis out of the position that easy. So. Uh, yeah, that, that is, you know, it, it is quite interesting to see if if it could come back to bite them in the face if they weren't, Ooh. you know... Don't well. lose! They are, they, are the very, they are very loose Ooh. almost. I think Tinnis is going to have a better exit here, potentially, going into... Jazzman's drifting the car around the corner. So is he drifting on your screen? Is he just my screen? He's going sideways for every corner. Uh, I know uh, that's yeah, he's impending. drifting a little bit. He's like he's taking the rally cross line for a minute there. I'm not, I'm not entirely sure there, but this is not rally cross. This is a uh, GT3. Gap <laughs> so, now down to 3.7 seconds as well. They've taken about a second a lap out of this lap time. There is Tinnis losing the rear end ever so slightly, almost running into the back of Jazzman. Jazzman pulling to the inside. He's just trying to look. He's weaving down the straight. He does not want his teammate to get the slipstream whatsoever. He's just weaving one way to the other. Now let's see. Tennis at the slipstream. He's going to be forced to go around the outside now. Jazzman will slightly pull to the right here. Try and squeeze his teammate to go around the outside. But keep on board because the other camera here not going to be very easy to follow. Now I think we can switch to the outboard camera. We can. And there he goes. Tennis and Jazzman still banging together on lap here. Lap 18 of 21. The two teammates right now are having a battle between them, the Lamborghinis. Two drivers leading this championship right now. Two drivers on the top of their game. Two drivers have taken the one, two in every single race so far this season. If I'm not too mistaken, at least. So far, running second and third. Because right now, the man who started on pole from the reverse grid pole position he got is Overtaker. Just about holding on to this by just over 3.6 seconds. And as these two continue their uh, battle, might we say, it's gone to lap 19, free to go. This could really, really work for them right now. 
Let's see, Tinnis wants to get past Jazzman. Jazzman really right now holding up his teammate. Runs a little bit wide through turn number one. Jazz, Tinnis loses the rear end right there as well for good measure. These two want to be careful. They don't take each other off the road. They want to be careful. He has a little look up the inside for a second. I thought he might just have a little lunge up the inside. On board we go then. With Tinnis, Jazzman losing the rear end everywhere right now. He's got no grip. He's just backing his teammate up right now. He's backing him off. And this is not working so far for them. Look, they're just holding each other up. Just the one thing I said they didn't want to do. And they're just costing each other heaps of time. Look at the amount of penalties we got, by the way. Wow. I think they're starting to get more penalties. One second, two second, one second, one second, one second, one second. Um, a lot of seconds to say in, in a single sentence. But, you know, I did see Overtake gain quite a bit of time. That's worrying if you were a tennis or jazz man right now. They've got to start thinking on their feet now if i was uh, if i if i was tennis i'd be like jazz man move out the way because i'm getting for first he says yeah that exactly you know tennis i think we'll and he's go. going through trying around the outside jazz man's then on the brakes and now can he come oh. through bang they hit they hit each other the two teammates one thing they didn't want to do and they've collided wow the thing that we and were hoping not to happen has unfortunately happened on our ver in, in our very eyes around Kota. The team rivalry has unfortunately twisted on its head and the hope that we were going to get a lead battle towards the end of this race is, you know, unfortunately not going to happen. And Jasmine and is fun again! again. And oh, it's no. the carnage and his teammates almost run into him again! This is absolutely carnage in this afternoon that's race! That's not good! What has happened here? And we've had a shadow of a doubt right now. That's going to mean that Tennis got damaged, Jasmine's got damaged. He'll carry on, I'm sure, to the end of this race. But what on earth has happened there? The two teammates colliding. That has got to be the worst thing you can ever happen. We said they didn't need to do it. I said they didn't want to do it. What do they do? They collide. And what can you say, though, now? Overtaker is like, he just, he has to, he can back off now. He doesn't have to afford to push. He doesn't need to push. He could just take it nice and cautious right now. Has he just got him out and got enough fuel, by the way? 6.3 litres. He's just got enough fuel. Darren Sinclair, by the way, he might be able to get third in this race because da Jasmine's got damage. He's going to be going at a reduced pace right now. He's going to have no grip. And when they didn't need it, and he's always spun the car again, he, he, right, Right while well, seeing the chat, Bono, my tyres are dead. Jazzman's probably saying that very much. He's got no grip out there. Look at him. Sliding one way to the other, to the other, to the other. He's got nothing out there. Darren Sinclair closing off on the pair of them right now. Can we see an Audi on the podium in this afternoon's race as well? I think we might be seeing the stewards involved in this potentially. Because Tinnis, I don't think Tinnis uh, is going to be happy of that one. Jazzman, I think he was a racing inch and lost the rear end, of course. But now, with that damage, it's going to cost him heaps of time. It's going to cost him more than a heaps of time. By the way, I think due to that penalty that uh, every person's got, might just say Vetro's Bacon right now. However, Essa's we'll just sitting further back. I think Essa might now actually be a potential to get even fifth position again. So, um, never say never between these three drivers. Uh, right now, though... Coming on towards your final lap of this race, Overtaker, Tinnis in second, losing the rear end even more. Jazzman getting caught rapidly right now by Darren Sinclair. Darren Sinclair right now in fourth position. Has Jazzman got a lot of damage? I don't know what the pace is right now. We'll have to see in a moment's time. But but what, what can you say, Jazz? I mean, this has got to be the biggest upset, the biggest moment so far between these two drivers. They've, they've not had contact ever, I believe. This season, or even in past season, they don't really collide together. They haven't really got too close together to have contact. And the one time they battle, they end up having contact. That was a huge. That was a huge shot. It it kind of reminds me. I think someone said in the chat it reminds um um the way that Re Reber and Vettel fighted in in Turkey 2010 as well. And uh, look how that ended up. Or Colin Paris in Belgium one year. Look how where that ended up. We thought that they were never gonna fight. Um, and crash into each other, but they did. But I'm sure they're going to take lessons learned from this race and uh, um, car carry on and continue um, to um, push on for the next race. I don't think it will hinder their driver's championship too much, but if I was Jazzman, that oh, is not it. good. Oh, keeping I think it on the road. He's just about keeping it on the road. He's hot. He's pushing. 
His car is damaged. He's, is he even going to finish on the podium? The gap's dropping 1.5. 1.4 seconds. He might even finish on the podium, Jess. This is going to be outrageous from Jazzman if he doesn't. He can Darren Sinclair. He's 1.7 seconds back now. He's closing up, though. We, we, we don't know. He might be under a for, for a penalty, though. Tinnus is starting to drop back as well. Is Tinnus going to let his teammate through? Tinnus has made a mistake as well. I, I'm kind of lost for words I'm, right I'm now. I'm speechless, Evo. let Jazzman through and then try and back off for Darren Sinclair. That could be a potential thing then. I don't know what's going on. All we do know is, right now, somehow, out of shock, I, I cannot hardly believe my eyes right now. I, 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 I'm almost speechless. Overtaker, he had a horrible first race. I ripped him off. I said maybe you might not be a win for him. Last time we saw a Ferrari win was in season nine, I think. Season 10 at best through the last corner. Overtake is going to prove everyone wrong. A Ferrari, a Ferrari, not a Mercedes, not a Lamborghini, not even a Porsche is going to win a race. A Ferrari comes to the line and an absolute ambiguous result. Overtaker wins the US Grand Prix. And I am absolutely biffed. Funded on that one. Overtakers were funded and he goes flying up the wall into the wall. I don't think he can believe it. I don't think we can believe it. Tinnis and Jasmine colliding with three laps to go. Jasmine is just about going to take that third position, by the way, from Darren Sinclair. And, and, and I'm just completely dumb, lost for words. Meanwhile, through the last corner, and there's been even more carnage going on this race because look, every person in Ezra battled. Vector is going to finish a remarkable fifth in a race full of attrition. And, 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 and I'm just completely lost for words. What an afternoon of racing. Vector is one of his best results for a while as well. He finishes in fifth. Esser in stick beating every person who finishes in seventh. But, but, but I've never seen a race like Nishikano in eighth. Slicker in ninth. Davy Zad's going to finish in tenth. We're waiting for Pren. Rotary, Bicky Daddy and Zelt, you the line, he's a lap down now. I even might not finish in 12th, but, but, ev Overtaker, oh my god, <laughs> Overtaker's been murdered. I, but I just can't believe it. I can't believe it. The first time in what? Four seasons, five seasons, I at least believe a Ferrari. A Ferrari will win a race. It's breaking the curse of just two free cars winning. Hello. There's Pren going across the line to uh, take that. Waiting for the last two. Big Kadari and Ethan. But your results. And and speechless results. Overtaker 99 in the Ferrari wins the US Grand Prix. He wins here that well the we'll call it the Texas Grand Prix because he got one in one week's time in Long Beach in California. Uh why does it say it's for in the UK? It does say in the UK, but we're in the US, don't worry. <laughs> we are in the US. Tennis in second, Jazzman in third after that. The controversial and carnetic contact later on. We'll have to speak to those two later on. Darren Sinclair fourth. Vector in fifth. Esser in sixth. Every person seventh. Chicano Wave Slicker nine. Davies out ten. Pren eleven. Bicky Daddy twelve. Rotary thirteenth. And Zout fourteenth. Fourteenth. And, and, and I just cannot believe it. I think you've got a little lump in your throat. I think I can. Uh... Um, hear it from your voice. Oh, 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 I'm lost for words too, Evil. I mean, Overtaker oh. Overtaker had pole position. He had pole. We thought that he was going to drop position in the first lap. But he took the lead. And in Molly Walker's words, he stayed there for the whole race. And his lap times was matching pretty much the leaders in a way. His best lap was a 2 minutes 6.2. That is incredible for him. And... You know, I, I'm very impressed and I'm just about to tell people to go in ready for interview box two if they want to be interviewed because we've got one person waiting there right now. Indeed. Well, we'll uh, bring them in in a few moments' time. I'm just... Uh, I'm pretty certain, Jess, that that was the first win in the, in the top tier since season nine. At least season nine or at least season ten. I, I'm absolutely lost for words. And uh, we're just waiting to see. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to be getting them into interview two, Jess, I think, aren't we? Uh, yeah, we are. It. But yeah. uh, we'll drag uh, Mr. Uh, Rotary in as he is the uh, first driver in 
our little uh, things. So we'll drag him in to come box one. And uh, let's speak to the first driver of this afternoon as uh, we see Ethan. Hello, my friend. Um, had a what could have been a potential uh, another podium, even a potentially a win. When I say you might be on chance for a win, you get caught up in an accident completely uh, out of everyone's control there. Just take us through that uh, rather unfortunate accident. If I'm honest, I, I don't want to talk about it. It's made me livid. Uh, all I can say is is that um, the curbs are an absolute joke on this game. Um, I'm just going to be honest here. And, you know, I'm kind of glad that Kota isn't in the next game because th this, this track design or model is just so poor. It ruins people's races. I'm not going to blame Prem at all because everybody else has been struggling and it's ruined my race and it's ruined his, the poor track model. That's all i got to say on that. That's it. Indeed. Uh, apart from that, though, you did a, a fantastic <laughs> job in qualifying, get himself oh, into... Wait, wait, uh, wait, wait. Uh, take us through that quality lap, Ethan. Uh, what, what's it like get, getting like that lap? And you weren't expecting it either, were you? I didn't qualify third at all. Fourth. I don't know. I, I, I can't even remember. Fifth. My brain's hurting after that race. Never mind. You got to third though at the race, big first race. That's, oh, why, yeah. that's why you got me, Evil, in the comments box as well. Oh, Keep you on the straight and narrow, eh? If I'm honest, it's just I just drove the car like a touring car. Yeah, it was just a complete pig. There was just no grip at all. Just appears the conditions this time around just seem to suit the Lamborghini a bit more, the Ferrari a bit more, stuff like that. You know, I've had a good few runs in the car. I mean, that's, you know, another podium for this. Could have been another. Could have been a win, maybe, but Overtake's pace seemed to be pretty good when he got himself out by himself. Um, but yeah, I did this with like two hours practice earlier today. Bog standard setup, literally only changed the dampers. The camber and the downforce, that's it. Didn't, didn't get a chance to really fine tune the car. So I just went within the man mentality, you know what, just, just wing it, see what happens. Qualifying, I could have got a better lap in. I've done two fours, which for me, sound is actually pretty decent. Everyone else was going a second a lap faster, but you know, once again, the Porsche not quite suited to the track or the conditions and then just winged out at the start and then just held on for dear life fighting against BKD. I know I had a bit of a mare at turn one and decided, you know, I wasn't happy with that overtake and let him back through. But I was just ragging the car around, treating it like a British touring car, just yeeting it everywhere. And just, well, I'm happy with, the, I'm happy with how I've done with the limited time and the basic setup, but I'm just that second race has just really really brought me down um, I'm just really really gutted because that could have been something it may not I don't think it would have been a win but I think maybe second would have been possible but we won't know now indeed well well moving on to uh talking about second uh odd position and they're having battle around there um Mr Jazzman had a bit of a contact at the end of that race uh, with your teammate. Just looked like you had no grip there. Your tyres, as uh, Lewis Hamilton said, Bono, the tyres are gone. And just take us through what, what you're experiencing in that second race. Um, well, in the second race, it uh, started badly for me. Um, uh, I got squeezed on the kerb and then it spun me into a wall. So I had 15 damage, but luckily limited suspension damage. Um, so... I was just, just trying to be as quick as I could be. Um, and I was and I was quite pleased that at least I still had some speed in me to, even with the damage, to be able to be quite competitive and move my way through the field. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so then once uh, me and Tennis got together, uh, I decided that maybe I want to have a bit of a battle with him. <laughs> it, uh, it didn't go quite good um as i went into the corner i had a power snap and then yeah he hit me i hit him um but no harm no foul we still finished second and third which i think was a great result considering all that happened to me in that race yeah yeah indeed because ha ha having contact with a teammate never uh ideal um of course uh you we, we were thinking earlier on were you gonna 
let each other uh, through to try and get leave. Of course, uh, that didn't end up happening. And uh, what, 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 uh, Tennis? I know you don't obviously party with him quite a lot of the races. Um, what, what, what was um, how's Tennis feeling after that? Um, I think uh, I think Tennis is um, I think Tennis is very happy. As you can see, he had great pace uh, today. Um, in the first race, you could, I mean, we were having a great battle, and then I was pushing too much, and then you know we didn't have our battle then. So, um, so we kind of thought, well, let's have a bit of a battle now in race two. But overall, no, no hard feelings. Um, we were the, the race today went as, I mean, for me it, it went it was an up and down evening. But overall, for the championship, I mean, you know, we we did well for the team championship, and we. Uh, doing very well as drivers in the drivers championship tonight as our rivals had a bit of a tough one um like rotary had a bad second race um so uh, overall we just decided to have a bit of fun and uh not get too serious about the championship just quite yet about letting each other through to go off the overtaker so yeah i think it was um maybe in hindsight the wrong decision um but i mean it was fun while it lasted in d well, moving on to uh, Essa, our next driver in our uh, interview box. Uh, Jess, you can uh, see if there's anyone else in the interview box. Uh, take, take us through your race. It was a rather quiet race, uh, all things perspective-wise for you, compared to, uh, it seems, everyone else. Uh, so just, just take us through Essa. What, what, how did your race go? Well, firstly, congratulations to the podium in both races. Um, yeah, you're spot on, though. Remarkably sat quiet, and I, to be honest, I thought I was going to be. I seem to have found like at least a second of lap pace over, especially last night and and um, the practice that I've been doing. So I was quite pleased overall, but yeah, it wasn't. Seemed to be late pace I was getting as well. Seemed to be catching people towards the end of both both races and and not quite. Uh, falling back away from him at the start. Yeah, indeed. Well, uh, just to I mean, they had a close battle, of course, with a few other drivers. Uh, again, again, you uh, last lap, you were very close to Vetro and uh, every person, then you seem to have dropped back. To, uh, take us through that kind of last lap because it looked like was there some contact or some mistakes going on? Because it just looked like you were right with Vetro and then you and every person just dropped back randomly. Yeah, I think, well, I think there was a little bit um, coming into, after the back straight, coming into the hairpin, I went for a move on every person, um, didn't quite make it stick and he came back past and I think it was just the two of us battling quite hard. We sort of dra- dropped back away from Vectra a fair bit, um, which seeing his penalties, his time penalties at the end would have been been a bit, if we'd not been battling, we might have been a bit closer. Hmm. Indeed. And the uh, penalties around this circuit, and this circuit, of course, like Ethan said, not not the most ideal circuit in the universe. Uh, turns out its track model is not the best, but uh, nonetheless, no, Jess, very uh, <laughs> uh, what, have you got any final words? Well, I, I, I've got to say, um, it, it's, been, it's been some good races to watch. Well done to the podium drivers for all uh, two races so far. And, you know, it, it, it shook things up a little bit in, in the second race. But uh, what, what can you do, uh, I believe? And uh, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing the next race, which is in Long Beach, which is next week, which, which, is, a, which is an hour race um, like the, the first two races. So... Uh, um, but it's, it's very narrow it's a street circuit so that should be interesting I've got to say but you know we're more about that next week but thanks for watching this stream tonight make sure you tune in same time same place for round four of the championship can anyone stop Tinnis and Jazz man we'll have to wait and see have a good evening rest of your evening whatever you're doing and we'll see you, see you next week bye bye